Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games for the past five years. <laughs> Darcy's here. Oh my god, where'd you come from? Uh, well, <laughs> I was hiding under a cat. <laughs> oh, the whole time. Yeah. I should have looked under the cat. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah welcome everyone to the fifth anniversary show of ZPH. Uh, can you believe it's been five years? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> It is very believable, that is true. <laughs> um, we not only have Darcy, we have a very special guest Woo! with us as well. Hey guys. Hey, Aaron. So you said hi, guys. Told you I could read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, only Tanya and I have the headsets in, so only two. Darcy's going to guess. <laughs> yeah, full couch tonight. Yes, with Aaron, Darcy, Tanya, and myself. The whole crew is here yep. to celebrate the five years uh, and everybody in the chat as well. Oh my God. And we're going to be playing an exclusive full uh, work in progress version of Rat Trap by Daryl Genther. Um, so I'm very excited about that. That's the port of the arcade game Mousetrap on the 7800. So let's put that up there. Fill in that blank spot. There you go. 7800. <laughs> Thank you. So how you been, Erlen? Oh, I've been pretty good. It's been an interesting wild ride the last little bit. I'm like... Life, life has been very fascinating. I feel like I'm like the ZPH uncle at this point. Where I, like, I show up on anniversaries. I don't quite know how I got here. I don't really know what's going on. I'm like giving unsolicited advice on topics no one's asked for. I'm just, I'm just around, you know? Like, I didn't catch every word, but it was very funny. <laughs> it was very it was funny. Very funny. Yeah, you're coming around. You, you know what you need in your life. You know what you need to fix. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's but it's uh, weird. It's like I'm like back in my day, I had a keyboard, and then it's like, well, no, but back in your guys' day, there's only one button to play a game. So I, I, somehow I feel right. like right in the middle of millennial. But it's it's great. I'm, it's so cool to be back on. And I'm sorry I can't be there in person. Well, lots of stuff on the go today. Oh, oh yeah, and, and uh, you'll be on the show. As, as, quicker than you know it yeah and uh, yeah we're gonna have Erlen back on the show soon enough mm -hmm. um probably after our break because we're gonna be taking a break after the fifth atari homebrew awards mm -hmm. um hopefully Erlen can be there for the fifth uh fifth annual atari home 25s <laughs> fifth annual atari homebrew awards as well um but then we're gonna take a little break after that to mm -hmm. recoup and uh i'm gonna work on some things for the show should be fun um, but before we get to reminiscing over the past five years, uh, let me read off some names of some uh, Twitch supporters. Uh, Twitch subscribers. Ace3093, Al Nefer, Arkham H, Armscar Coder, Atari 800 XL Rules, Atari 1974, Atari 20 Scunner Dude, Atari H, Beef Supreme, BR Poker, Buck Owens, Chalcedony Mount, Charles Wynn, Chide 5, Colonel Lambert, Cubanismo, Dianoid, Dan FC, Daryl Knight, 70 Drexel, Dr. Moo, Cows, Granular Snow, Great Defender, Ground Trooper, Your Rapper, Johnny WC, Computer, Kenzo, Carol G, Ken Jennings, Invader, Veltifer, Lambda Express, Lone TTZ, Mad Max, Mark Hannes, Mark Space Inc., Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Michael Town, Max Command, MK Smith, Mr. Zarno, Mr. Vix, Monty Funster, Nate Strum, Neo Mina, Nostalgia, Ghost Style, Packard, VG, Koag, R. Antwitz, Raymond, CRC70, Render, Ghost of Friendless, VG, Retro Gaming, Ricardo Pim, Six Sweets, Silicone Toad, Smitty B, Smoke, Spice Rare, Smears, D Twin, Welshman, Tiki Dan K, T Post, Team Events, for uh, Vitoko 8 bits, X Ken X. We're like three away from me not reading all these names. Yeah. <laughs> There's way too many. No. Uh, yeah, when it gets I 75, think, I think I'm it do goes to different. vote. It, do what? I think it goes to vote because to vote the what people I who are deciding whether it's 75 That's above true. or below 75 should decide. Mm -hmm. That's true. Just have They're to have the a subscribers. Poll. Set, up a, set up a poll. What to do? Yeah, what do we do? When it hits 75. <laughs> Um, so if you want to show your support and subscribe to the show, you can. It's free with Amazon Prime. Hit subscribe. Just make sure you click all the buttons. Or you can just follow the show, and then you'll see when we're on live. <laughs> or subscribe on YouTube, and you'll get all the alerts. All that kind of stuff. Uh, then you just read off the important names. Correct. Oh, yeah. the important names. Yeah. Now, which ones would those be? I think it's all of them. All of, they're all very important, <laughs> yes. Um, so... Let's go over some stats, because those are always fun. Um, we have done over 450 Let's Play shows Okay. over the five years. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, over 50 interviews of developers. 
not individual people, but interviews in general. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's dub there's doubles there. We've done remote shows from PRGE. We've done a fundraiser for Stella. We played through every retail release 2600 game. Uh, we've done yeah. four, almost five Atari Homebrew Award shows. Tons of exclusive premieres of new homebrew games. Um, lots of other special events as well. Uh, Atari Age Day as well. Um, some other stats. The first show we ever did was February 9th, 2018. And that was with Darcy. And it was uh, uh, very, you should pop me up in the corner instead of full screen. Um, we will, you can say that out loud. <laughs> it's all good. It seems, I'm um, so used to Zoom meetings where, I, where the, the entire <laughs> thing that goes on like, through the, the chat. Erlen's got his hand up. Erlen's got his hand up. <laughs> the thing is, when you type that, it went on the screen. I just saw for that, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll figure out. I'm figuring out the ways. See, this is uncle which, which behavior. Is... I'm like, how does this technology work? <laughs> Where do I click this? You're not. Where you're the aren't allowing this. People speak. are doing. It's it's for Darcy, so he can see what Erilyn's saying. So if you can type and say what you're saying at the same time, Darcy can join in too. I've got stenographer <laughs> no, no, no. skills. This is my typing class. Actually, we will put you in the corner because we're going to show not here, um, the first show, a uh, bit of the first show. Andrew Davey said uh, they want the list to be read out even when there's 2,000 subscribers. What well, I think is that at that, that point, what show. you do <laughs> it would be is you show. read them all out and you just have to whisper the, where, the, the names throughout, <sighs> the, throughout show, the show, just whispering in the background. Just do it. <laughs> No, going right, That's going like an left, ASMR channel. Left to right, <laughs> right to left. Yeah, that would work. Uh, so let's uh, take a look quickly. Like, we had no intro. For that long. It just so like can okay. my. Oh, so much hair. <laughs> <laughs> you look the same. Yeah, oh, pretty much. God. Got the beard, got okay. the long hair well, still. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> see how that goes. Yeah, this would yeah, have been a different no camera. camera. Computer nope. is on overload. No welcome. Actually, that's a good uh, way to see the chat. Yeah, it would have been a different camera. It would <laughs> yeah, have been my yeah. camera. Yeah, it would have been a little one. Tablet. Right? Yeah. Here. Actually, you've, I think it would have been Type on my tablet. It was really? the one where you yeah. had to have the piece of paper over. Uh, so yeah. Still be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, stupid ads. There you are. Hey, okay. <laughs> and like, we didn't have the chat on the screen. I'll mute it now. And, oh, we do say hello. It's the beginning. Um, but at, the frame rate is like three frames a second. <laughs> it's really terrible. Was it? And then the accident? camera overheats. Yeah, yeah. And we have to switch over to the webcam, which actually looks way better because it was able to keep up with things. And so the first games we played uh, were Super Cobra Arcade, uh, Ixion. <laughs> And uh, spies in the night. Some some good uh, good selections there. And uh, yeah, yeah, the show hasn't really changed too much. <laughs> We're still playing games, uh, but we have like uh, the chat on the screen. So I don't know who was there during the first show, unless we set out somebody's name. Um, so I don't know how early. Oh yeah, because it's not on. The, it's not stored. In not stored like unless I paid enormous amounts of money for Twitch to store all my stuff. Which I believe you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> nice comment, Dan ABC. Uh, no, I did not pay extra. Actually, you can't. I don't know if you can pay extra. You just have to be at a certain level <laughs> of subscribers, and I think it's seventy-five subscribe. Is it 70? No, it's not even that. You have to sustain, on average, 75 Viewers. watchers yeah, throughout viewers. the show. We're nowhere near. It's, uh, it's a very niche show. We like our small community. <laughs> That's what we say when we have a small community. That's right. <laughs> uh, the first show with Tanyon was March 14th. Uh, just over a month after. I thought she came on much later than that. But no, it was a month after that. And it was the fourth show. The fourth show, yeah. That you that came on. It's yeah. that thing where you watch a series for a while and then you go back and watch season one and you're like, oh, they have so many more things in season one. I thought that those came out, yeah. Much yeah. later, yeah. yeah. Mm. 
Ivory Tower Collections has a Serenity shirt. Oh, you've worn that a couple times, eh? Yep. Yeah. Um, and then Erlen came on uh, four months in to uh, Zero Page Homebrew on the 28th show. It took a long time. These were not labeled <laughs> in my archives. And I, re I remember how you pitched it to me was you said that you'd just done like a solo show and you had like literally dropped to zero viewers at a certain point. But I am like doing like having like an existential crisis, just being like, I'm literally like, you're like, oh, it is so hard. And you're like, man, it'd be so much better to have somebody, even just somebody here to like talk to would help so much because yeah. it's nothing. Like if it's zero people on really early on and you're just like talking to your friend, that's way better than just being alone and like, your house playing games to nobody oh. like early <laughs> early humble beginnings 100 percent. and and tanya was sick yesterday and we were going to do this show yesterday yeah and i was like no no i've done shows on my own <laughs> they're disasters because i'm just scrambling to fill time there's no reaction other than the chat yeah and if the chat's not active i'm like uh Come here, kitties. <laughs> <laughs> Say something <laughs> quick. Um, and we started off with uh, the Atari 2600 uh, right off the bat. And Darcy helped, uh, pretty much did all of the work, uh, getting the RGB into my into the Atari 2600. Oh, yeah, we did that. In the, yeah, yeah. Quite like a year, a year and a half before the show even started. Like yeah. I was preparing the show years and years in advance, probably yeah. like four, <laughs> four years in advance before yeah. starting it because I planned to the nth degree. Um, and then we added the Atari 7800 about two and a half years in because mm -hmm. we were just like, oh, we'll just do 2600 stuff. But then it's like, Oh, there's some cool games in the 7800. I have one of those. And I put the S video into the 7800. We started playing 7800. And uh, then we added the 8-bit uh, a year after that, August 3rd, 2021. Then Jaguar uh, early, next, early last year, April 26, 2022. The Atari 5200 uh, two months ago. And then the Atari Lynx, uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> so now we cover them all. Need more Vectrex. Yes, we do. Um, and I bought some uh, enhancements for the Vectrex as well. Hi, cat. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> the cat is on the table. Okay, bad cat. Um, we made, uh, I made a cake. <laughs> a no I'm, cake. I'm a little embarrassed to show the cake. No, don't be embarrassed. Uh, let's see. It's a fail cake. It's a fail cake. <laughs> uh, the icing was, uh, a little thin. Uh, you can make out No, the it's glazed. It's, it's lightly glazed. <laughs> it also collapsed. It's a little bit also collapses. <laughs> As long as it tastes that good. That was on purpose. It's supposed to look like a cubic. I don't. It, yeah, yeah, a large. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a square hex nut. There or you go. Some. Still edible. We'll see. Yeah. It's a money. Uh, it's a money with a hole in it for the, for the string. I also had to use different flour because we ran out of flour. It looks like a collapsed volcano. It's a volcano cake. <laughs> That's a what dangerous. we're going to go with. It's a volcano cake. Um, so uh yeah five years lots of fun yeah uh, what about the cats oh the cats yeah this is uh they've been here for quite a while yeah. um, they've been helping ever since the first show atari's been here the whole time he's a veteran of the show yes and uh sprite's a newbie to the show yeah you can see you can see the eagerness in his eyes <laughs> he's, he's yeah. a little too enthusiastic if you know what i mean yeah they they we've been developing games for them over the t over the time mm -hmm. and they appreciate that yeah and uh oh actually i didn't announce teleprompter resubscribed thank you so much during the show and i missed it um james will not be getting the cake making patch no not this time i'm gonna have to try again <laughs> <laughs> and we did kind of drop doing the patches for a while because we got down to the hard ones and then we and then could get, like, get it, oh get so frustrating the hard ones done. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to start those up again yeah uh there was also a special c64 show that's right uh, so we did a Vectrex, a C64 show. I got to do Mission Impossible. So. I don't know if we've done, we've done any other. Oh, we've done a ColecoVision yeah. and an Intellivision show Yeah. as well. So we've strayed. I mean, those aren't going to come in because it's an Atari show. Um, and I've, I've slowly fallen in love with the, the line of Ataris because uh, I really only played the 2600 when I was uh, 
when I was younger. That's it. None of the other. I didn't even know some of these existed growing yeah, up. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't until. <laughs> like had you Until heard of zero page any of them like yeah. the 7800 50, 200 i knew there was a de- from you i knew there was a computer line <laughs> yeah. of computers like Atari computers. i was aware of them. Yeah. but wasn't there was the was the atari was the 800 out before the 2600 it, no 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 uh what, what 2600 was, was 77 um the atari 400 slash 800 was 79 so was, was the one out before after. the atari Oh, no, it was in the 70s, though. It was just late 70s. Okay. Yeah, late 70s was the uh, 8-bit computer line. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you for resubscribing, RC70. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's been a fun five years. I don't know what else there is to say about it. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, looking forward to five years more. Mm-hmm. Um, and after the Atari Homebrew Awards, we're going to take a little break. And I'm going to be working on some Atari 2600 programming for something i'm not going to tell you what um it's not even a game actually (laughs) i'm disappointed if you if you don't have high expectations yeah uh so it's it should be fairly simple to do um so um i'm hoping to have it done before the next season of of zero page but uh we'll be doing shows here and there but not regular shows um like when there's like a big big game i want to show on on the show like a a a premiere of something i think uh we'll just throw on some shows here and there or do some after darks with some some challenges or something there was a and we'll get erilyn back on the show there was a good question in the chat does anyone have any favorite shows are there any things that kind of come to memory of like like moments even of like things that have happened over the last five years that like that that rush to the front of your brain I think all the marathon shows were I mean all the special shows are are great. The ones I always remember the most <laughs> are when we find bugs. <laughs> Those are always really fun. Yeah. There was one of the Pac-Man one of Pac-Man Plus's games I think where did we go through a wall? I can't remember. It's always exciting yeah. when something happens that's absolutely not supposed to happen. I mean, the Bruce Lee 8-bit. Oh, yes, we got Bruce Lee on the moon. <laughs> Where Tanya was able to get Bruce Lee on the moon. That was so cool. <laughs> and the developer's like, what the hell? <laughs> How did you get him up there? <laughs> that, that was, was fun. And Andrew Davies says, I'd go with one about three shows ago. That was his show. Yeah, uh, there the you moon. go. I mean, the the <laughs> interviews are all... Watch that cat. He's not chewing on cables. Yeah. Um... The interviews are always great. Yes. Because you get to talk directly with the developers when you've like never talked with them before and some of them have never been interviewed before on any show. So you get a lot of in-depth knowledge about their the reasons behind making the game, their motivations, their history with the console itself. I think those are a lot of fun. The look on James' face was priceless when you got on the moon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Galaga. Oh, that one. Yes, the Galagon reveal. Yes, that was amazing. Yeah. Was, because, uh, s- sorry, go ahead. I was, that was huge. I remember just the gasp. I heard you make a sound. I never. <laughs> you were on I'd that never show. Heard were you on that before. show? It was like I think people even grabbed it, and you're like, <gasps> like it was just this like it, it was this primal like moment. It was just like it was this pure joy. Oh. And and you were oh, and, yeah. and I'd never played the game before, and you were like, it was just like this perfect storm of just like <laughs> of beauty. Somebody who's who's one of their favorite games, and somebody who doesn't watch that cat. He's yes. getting dangerously close. Um, and one of whose favorite games it is. And uh, John Champeau does a secret game reveal every once in a while on the show mm-hmm. where I have no clue what the game is. Nobody does except for the people who worked on the game, the developers. And he, and he gives me the, the uh, binary beforehand, but he puts a lock on it. Like you have to put in a code or... <clears throat> Uh, solve a puzzle basically. solve a puzzle yeah. <laughs> so he's like yeah you're not gonna be able to do it anyway uh, even if you get the binary early um so that's that was that was probably one of the probably the most surprising shows ever like oh my god like how can it be better galaga on the 2600 and of course he does a superb job of it yeah, yeah. it's like with all the options he adds in it's better than the arcade yeah and it plays exactly like the arcade. I remember Mappy being a big one too. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was amazing, too. I like the show where you interviewed Nolan Bushnell. Don't remember that one. Don't think I did that one. <laughs> um, I, 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 I have to confess something. Yes. I, I can't read lips. Oh, I'm I sorry. I mean, a little bit. I was able to <laughs> read some. Hey, 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 guys. I've got uh, that that's one. That's pretty good. Yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah. Everything else after that, I, I missed and completely. I was just faking it when I was <laughs> laughing along with you. I just watched you guys and saw if you were laughing, and then I would laugh. Uh, uh, the other show <laughs> that I, I thought was, was pretty fun for me, anyway, is interviewing um, the guys from Activision. Oh yeah, that was really really yeah awesome. yeah, yeah yeah the audacity show where we yeah. premiered uh, With Circus the big Convoy train, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that was um, that was it was like oh was my huge, god I'm yeah. talking to people whose games I played in the eighties that's unbelievable that was a lot of fun yeah yeah the kitchens and crane yep exactly yeah yeah and I think I was playing their game at yeah. the time. <laughs> And he made me practice it beforehand because normally when I play games on this show, I show up five minutes from work and I just play whatever's on the screen. Yeah, to, um, to the dismay of some developers. Yes, but you know what can you do? But, I think it's an advantageous. <laughs> yeah, 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 having somebody just pick up a game yeah. they know nothing about yeah, and that's... see how playable it is from from no knowledge. Yeah, but yeah. I was actually getting far enough into the game that I, they wanted me to stop. Yeah, they're like, no, they're no, like no. no, no, don't show the whole game. That's don't show much. the whole <laughs> game. You're actually getting through the whole thing. So. Oh, yeah, the Stellathon. Like I mentioned earlier, the four-player oh, yeah. Stellathon oh, yeah. where Erlen was here, that Darcy was and Tanya yeah, and myself. And we're playing for super long periods of time games and playing four-player games as well. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do a... Uh, now that I have a upgraded four port Atari 5200, we're going to do another four player day at some point with Erlen and Darcy and Tanya and I. And we're going to play Mule on the 5200 and some other four player games because that's a four player console. Mm. The, the first edition of the 5200 that came out had four joystick ports. Ah, cool. Then they got rid of two of them because. Nobody made four-player games. No one had four like, friends. Let's save on or costs. Three, no one had three friends. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. the first Atari computer uh, that came out had four ports as well, so that's mm -hmm. where the carryover was from. I mean, Mule is not a homebrew, but it's such a good game that we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll play it at the end. Play it at the end. <clears throat> oh yes, uh, Darcy, remember when we played? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same game. But you were at your house, yeah. and I was at my house, and we, we played combat right? over the internet. Yeah, and it was the first ever online game yeah. televised on the twenty six hundred yeah. in and the it, world. And it was out of sync, so it, could it have got been quickly better, out of sync. But it was pretty cool, <laughs> anyways. Yeah, it was super super cool. Yeah, <laughs> over the uh, it was over the plus cart. Or, no, it was no. it was uh, it, emulation. It was no, we played it on a, a real console. You played it on emulation. Yeah. Yes. And it was through yeah. the plus card. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, that was like, wow. That was unbelievable. <laughs> what? Can you name any highlights, Erlen? Oh, or? yeah. Um, I remember uh, just the satisfaction of like beating a, a, a VHZ uh, ZC game. Just trying to like, just oh, trying to like yep. grinding through. Like, I like remember like Ninjish guy in like low res world being one like final, like beating yes. that game. I'm just like, I, I think it took us like multiple shows and we would sort of like have a small section to go and just the, the, <laughs> the pure satisfaction of like getting through. I don't believe I ever beat it. I believe I witnessed. James beat it, and I felt like a, I felt like a, <laughs> like I was like a companion on the ride, you know. Um, King of the world. But, but I also recall like some early games. There's one game I can't remember the name of it. It was almost like you were a monkey, and there were things falling, um, uh, like a uh, uh, top. Oh. And you're like switching sides, yep. but what was notable moment for me is I remember during the show we were playing the game and like giving some feedback and bug report, and I believe that during the game yes. the guy was watching, patched it, sent us a new one. We loaded it in, and we like <laughs> in live time had like this patch happen, which I just was such an in, for, at least from like uh, being on a show, just like it was like it, it, just, it felt like God. You're like, what? How does this happen? And, like, have <laughs> I played was... a game, said something? out loud and then like the game is sent back to me fixed and i'm that like a, another time on the show but remember that being just so notable and just so unique to this whole format yeah that was very very unique uh having a game patched in real time 
mm-hmm. while we're playing the game because the developer is watching. <laughs> and that uh, that maybe has happened one more time besides that times. It's super rare that somebody's able to patch it that quick. Um, yeah, just some of the bugs and, and the, uh, the chess show that we did. Because uh, I was saving some chess games for the on the 2600. And so Erlen, Erlen loves playing chess. So we played a bunch of chess games. That was a lot of fun. Um, oh, Atari 2600. Do I remember the show where you had some guy come on and try and beat the Frostbite world record? And he... Uh, that was uh, Corey. And he did really well. <laughs> yeah, he And would. I think he did beat some records on some pages. Yeah. Uh, not the world record, but he did like astronomically well, like even for him, and he's really good at frostbite, and it, and that was un- unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, RC seventy says really miss getting Erlen's perspective on Aww. stuff. <laughs> He'll be back. He'll be back shortly, shortly, shortly. As ZPH is a high stakes live beta <laughs> test. Yeah. That's true. Much. <laughs> I mean, you don't know wh- <laughs> what we're gonna do on the show. It's it's it is live. And uh, it is a lot of fun trying to... I mean, we don't intentionally try and break games. No, no. We're not... But it's always kind of exciting. It's kind of exciting when you find something. (laughs) Because you you never know what strange things people are going to do with a game. Yeah. When you're playing it. Like, you have your testers, and you're telling them, oh, try this, try that. But when you're not actually beta testing the game, and you're just naturally playing it, Things are going to happen. Some weird things are going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Sherlock Jr. says it's not a bug. It's an undocumented Correct. feature. Correct. Yeah. And we play differently from the developers, not the testers. Yeah. yeah. And that was one of the early things that we had to really hammer home to people when we first started this show. Remember, Darcy? Yeah. We were like, we, I, I never had instructions on the 2600 when I yeah. had a 2600 yeah, yeah, because yeah. we just picked these used games out of a bin. They're mm-hmm. 50 cents or a dollar and there's no yeah. manuals. Yeah. So we just had to figure them out and we uh, acquired games for also, our Also, whether it was a 2600 or otherwise, read the yeah. manual. Uh, ah. toss. You just play it. And if you can't play it without the manual, then... Yeah. Hopefully you know somebody who can and they can tell you what to do because you're not going to read the manual. No. <laughs> and, and we had both had C64s back in the day and mm-hmm. lots and lots of games that we acquired and there was no instructions no. for them. I had the instructions for uh, Ultima. Ultima 3. Yeah, yeah. I and, still and, do. And, and, sus- <laughs> and uh, Suspended, which we bought, co-bought. Yeah, yeah. Do you have that? <laughs> yeah, have still that. in the, oh, good, it's good. still there. Yeah. It's safe. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll my see le- if the disc that was my works. least favorite of all those ones. I never fun. got anywhere in that one. Oh, it was brutally hard. Yeah. Oh, when did the After Dark shows start? Mm. Uh, that's really easy to figure out because I labeled them. Yay, that's an easy answer. Uh, oh, yeah. So it was a big learning curve for um, people watching the show. They're like, why aren't you reading the instructions? You're breaking our brain. You're making us go crazy. And I'm like... Well, we like not reading the instructions. It's f- <laughs> it's a fun discovery, um, but then we do we read the instructions as we play, and we kind of figure out things and find out things. Remember that show where Tanya drank booze? That show. <laughs> oh my god, that Very was a funny crazy. Kath and N2D. That was a crazy show. <laughs> uh, she went she went off the rails That's right. there. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's get this. I quizzed her. Apparently, this one isn't booze. It is not booze. Oh. I was a little disappointed. I was disappointed. sick yesterday, so the alcohol uh, is out for the for the short term. Mm. So. so, the first After Dark was uh, May 23rd, 2021, and we started doing those. We've kind of not done them in the last little bit because we've just been so busy. Um, because we wanted to play the game a lot longer, and we didn't want people to think oh this is a regular show and we're going to dive deep into the game and well in some senses we are but these the after darks were like oh we want to play this one game for three hours and finish it or get really far in it so we're just like oh yeah this is after dark you know what you're getting it's not a regular show there's no news we're just going at one game and uh it 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 felt it felt easier because there's not as much expectations it's like oh we'll just put in the after dark and uh yeah when's the last after dark we did here's a here's uh, a salacious I... question james 
think that's Uh-oh. a salacious answer, though. But has there been any ones that were pulled for some sort of reason, like any sort of deleted episodes or anything that just kind of just didn't work out? I don't think there is, but I it sounds like a fun, fun question. So I wanted to ask. There is one. One See now, one now this is the one everyone wants host. to watch. This is this is the way psychology works. <laughs> Can anybody for, remember which one I pulled when what I never that? posted again? Which one? Well, I'm not telling. <laughs> what, what did, which, he, what oh, did what? Erlen say? <laughs> oh, yeah. Which one? What? Uh, yeah. I tried to tell you, what? but I can't actually remember. Has there ever been a listening. show that's been pulled? Oh. Taken, taken down. Off, taken down. Yes, oh, okay. there's one episode. I actually physically deleted it. It's not even on YouTube, so it's not really? it's not even hidden. Yeah, I just so I don't accidentally put it up again. People got really, really mad at me for deleting it or no, for putting, for putting it, up? it up for oh. doing the show. Like super pissed, hmm? and the developers got a little mad too. Really? Now, now you have my <laughs> now you have my now I want to watch so that curious. episode. There you go, Splendid Nut, the playthrough of Circus Convoy. Uh, oh, yes. I, I, I played through the whole game the day after it was released. The day Meryl it was released, Bain I played through the whole game. Muriel, Doug, and you were like, you're spoiling everything! Ah! Yeah, look, too soon, too soon. Too soon, too <laughs> yeah, soon. It's yeah. like, I didn't force you to watch it. But it's just, <laughs> it's like, why are you watching it? Oh, uh, how can you be spoiling this game for me? How dare you? It's like, why are you watching it? Yeah. <laughs> but they just got really, 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 really mad. Like everyone got really mad. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm it was dele- just too early. It I'm was deleting just too it. Early. <laughs> I'm deleting it. It's yeah. gone. Yeah, too bad. But but it wouldn't be too early now. So you, <laughs> the, the thing is, you didn't yeah. have to permanently delete it forever because now it wouldn't be too early. No, because there's like comments in the show. I'm like, oh, I'm playing through it. Uh, and I did. People lost their mind. They did. They lost their minds. Every comment was so negative about it. <laughs> and I and I even typed like I put up warning. This is a full playthrough. People do this all the time with brand new games like um, digital games on PC. They're like, oh, I'm going to be the first one to do a full playthrough that people will do it. But they but I think the reasoning behind it, because I had early access to the game. Yeah nobody could have possibly solved it as fast as i could oh, like yeah, nobody yeah. because could. you had you and had the chance to play it yeah they thought i had a they had, i had advantage and i did yeah but and the same on the other hand it's like well don't watch it wait till you get stuck and watch it then yeah but or don't people, watch it at all people want to watch I can't the show help but watch it i can't help it it's so funny that's not a bad thing that's yeah that people want to watch the show yeah, so yeah. so it's a little different than than you know some yeah. random streamer who does a full run through and they just go i'll skip that one i think people want to watch the show so but they'll be back on the blu-ray box edition yeah exactly (laughs) uh uh, considering we did how many games how many shows uh you said 450 450, yeah multiply that by what would you say an average would be that's like not quite 100 a year but conservatively two hours i know the average is going to be over two hours each for sure what sorry what was the question it's 450 shows they're yeah. saying bo- a blu-ray boxed edition the blu-ray box and i'm just oh like god how long would that be uh, it would be you over could a easily thousand do it. hours yeah. you could easily do it it would just be really like crap quality yeah <laughs> you know, like two bit two two pixels by two pixels yeah. yeah when did treats time start that's somebody can research that <laughs> i don't know i do I mean, we fed them we just gave them treats we gave them treats and oh. then we taught pixel to ring a bell yes and then no no it was no atari it was and pixel atari, atari and then, was the one that rang the bell and pixel was just like ah, it's treat it. time yeah. yum oh, yeah. yum yum yeah. yum treat time oh, and then right. when uh okay 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 those are cat ears that's cat ears <laughs> because cat i ears. didn't hear it it's in your headphones <laughs> it is in the headphones oh and, oh you're right and atari that's heard it right well i also pulled down the bells so that but, also but i saw him dancing around when you were reaching up he was, <laughs> oh i think i heard the thing and his little ears were clicking. that's a snare but i will never forget the day the we taught sprite to ring the bell uh-huh. because he did it on camera he learned it on camera and he learned it after one try Oh, yeah. One try, and all of a sudden, the bell, he figured out immediately, he bell was, rang, get treats. He was watching and thinking. Oh, Erlen, uh, you haven't been here for the 
treat competition yet. They now <gasps> compete. Atari oh, won. Man. Oh, Atari is is in the lead in now. The lead. One zero. He doesn't know where the bell is. Oh no! He's, Sprite he's, is confused. He's, he's ringing like, the carpet. He's pushing the bell. <laughs> he's not ringing it. Oh, oh it's one, tied one. one all. Sprite's a little confused today. Atari's on point. No, get the get it. No, can't hear it. Come on. Oh, that, that technically that? rang. Yeah. Two one for Sprite. Oh, oh two two for Atari. There's a double ring there. Good effort. Oh, three two for Sprite. He's he's now uh, he's now taking catching the lead. Up. He's taking the lead. Oh, no. four two four three four three for Sprite now. Oh, Atari is Atari's disadvantaged because he likes to steal his food. Yeah. <laughs> three, five, three. Oh, the door has to be closed. Five, some three cats, for Sprite. Some cats, they, they, like, for them, it is, nothing is tastier than stolen food, so they will steal their own food. They'll grab it and take it away. Oh, come on. Get out of the way of the door. Yeah, it's, a, it's a predator instinct. Oh, you can't escape it. Six, three for Sprite. Yeah, he is a predator. He wants to take it away. So they want to play. They want to oh, play. Good job, Atari. I I'm very glad that you're sticking up for yourself Six, now. 6-4 for Sprite. 7-4 for Sprite. Now that Sprite is no longer a kitten. 7-5 <laughs> for Sprite. 8-5 for Sprite. Oh, boy. That's quite a lead. Did I say 8? Eight? 8. 8. 8-6 yeah. for Sprite. Oh, you have a chance. You have a chance. Keep Especially it going. with Sprite's butt on the bell. Oh, 9-6 oh, for Sprite. He took his bite off. It's but, uh, now game point. And he's heading back. No, he's confused. He's heading back. And it's over. Uh, 10, 10, 6. 10, 6. 10, 6 for Sprite. Yeah. <laughs> we almost forgot the most important bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good effort. Come on, Tari. you got to step up your game. Um, so any, uh, let's see. Any more questions? Anything else anybody brought up? Uh, let's see. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, no manual. Let's have Darcy play Raiders of the Arch, uh, Lost Ark and uh, Sword I'm Quest. sure I would do just as well at those as I do in the other games. Oh, no. They're, Wait. like, almost impossible to play without the manual. Yeah, like, I'm saying I'm bad at the other games too. I know. I know <laughs> Especially Raiders of the Can Lost Can you Ark. die without the manual? Yes. Okay, well then it's the same. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, Smitty B says, I think the first show I caught about three years ago was one with Erlen. I don't remember the game, but I remember Erlen's enthusiastic comment of whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so That's going on, you know. Yeah, that's that's the lasting impression was Erlen's enthusiasm. Forget the game. <laughs> that's good. Um, E.T. was also quite involved. Yeah, without the manual, E.T. is is bad. We need to get that bell sound into T.I.A. or Pokey to teach them to play two, play a two-player game, Atari game like Pong. People have been threatening to make a game. <laughs> it would have to be hooked up to like a the bell, and it would be a, and it would have to trigger something in the game. Yeah. And the game would have to... And there'd have to be like a hose that put, <laughs> that squirted food into their mouth. Liquid on food. <laughs> and they'd have to react to something on the screen, though. Otherwise, it would just be random bell ringing, which because might work. Because they definitely, definitely flying around. only ring the bell for <laughs> snacks. They yeah. do not do oh, it Christ. for any other reason. They're not competing with each other. Yeah. Because, yeah, <laughs> it could be birds flying around or mice, but I don't want them actually attacking the screen. Yeah. Because some people get their, their iPads or tablets, and there are games for cats. Yeah, where they tap they tap the because their fish or the what, whatever flies their across. Their paws work yeah. on tablets, but I don't want to get them into that habit of attacking things on screens. Mm. So I don't know. Cur convert the bell into custom controllers. Like, we could take the bell game that we already play with them and have some sort of interface so the bell recognizes, oh, that one rang or that one rang. Yeah. And have the score on the screen. Yeah, you could, that, you could for sure do that. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. have their names and their pictures. So you would just have an automatic screen. score. However, yeah. automatic score. However, yes. it, that would codify the rules. And when Sprite decided that Atari's bell was his bell, oh, Atari cheaters. would start winning. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, was there a show that nothing went right? Oh, oh yes. There's been many. 
There's oh, been technical s- difficulties yes. ones. Yeah, we yes. had some uh, early on where a lot of early on ones. Yeah, yeah where, where like the sound would be out of sync. The sync and, was terrible, and it was yeah. just making me crazy. But it's it, gotten in better. particular because like <laughs> normally you're all about the sound being awesome. <laughs> yes. But in the stream, you, you it just took a while for you to like figure out how to do it and get it. And so I it was still don't also. know. I still don't 100 percent know how to make it perfect for a while there it was like oh this is great then we did a show upstairs and then i brought it all back down oh and, and it went crazy so ever since then yeah. it's like oh, i don't know what's going on <laughs> sometimes some shows it's great and like the last show where people were saying it's out of sync everything's out of sync and i watched the show back and nothing was out of sync the whole show <laughs> but our our so what's the difference between the stream and the there can be yeah, yeah. Um, like the delivery times and some people have to restart their streams and it could have been just twitch out of it because the local recording is local it doesn't go over the internet um, and we did have some internet difficulties last show mm. um, I saw after the fact but it was like towards the end but it might have been happening throughout that might have just thrown it off just a little bit just enough it's annoying and i'm and i'm working through some technical difficulties on on the computer like the network card the upstream the upload goes to zero sometimes but anyway also i think that like you know the analog to digital conversion is just like that's a wild thing to do like most of the time i it think is. people will just like emulate things or if people are streaming it's like the computer is like got the game downloaded it's like one game Stream that one game like mm-hmm. every single time you guys do the show you have like three different games on multiple different consoles that are like transferring yeah. from analog to digital to then stream <laughs> to then go out it's like i remember like at one point like a friend of mine was like they're like oh my n64 can't plug into my computer we gotta just throw it out you know like that's most people <laughs> i just like that's the that's how deep people will go into this this kind of thing and i feel like also most shows will have like a technician or somebody kind of behind the scenes but you're also like on the show managing all the things yeah. but it's part of the charm you know one doesn't simply through a it stream is. without some difficulties <laughs> you know you you've got you've got the minds of moria you've got lots of stuff on the go that you got to sort of forge through and if you don't enjoy the journey why are you here you know that's right and and it's a it's a humble show it's a very small show we do all <laughs> of our own tech stuff here like erilyn says and and i kind of like that um it's it's also frustrating because i have to kind of stop sometimes well, and like go over and do something and like tanya say, yeah. talk darcy <laughs> ah. entertain the crowd um <laughs> but that's the advantage of having a second person because if you're doing it yourself and you're having technical difficulties yeah. that's just dead air right like you're just oh like God. trying to get stuff done so zph yeah. all real consoles no emulator unless you have uh, yeah, ex- <laughs> yeah and that's what i strive like all of these are real consoles even the links now is a real console. We're not emulating anything. I even bought a PAL computer imported from Europe, upgraded with all the memory and VBXE, so I can play all the games. There's no game I cannot play now. Probably one or two, but um, (laughs) 99%. Um, Are there some homebrews you wanted to present but just haven't been able to fit them in? The hardest homebrews to play on the show are puzzle games those are the best ones mm-hmm. and really long rpg games yeah yeah but why are they hard to play you can't just show a bit is it that is it i don't is that a james to problem sh- yeah it's a, it's a okay. me problem it's the okay. rpgs are a me problem because it's like well we barely even scratched the surface of these rpg but sometimes I, we just do it in after dark and that's fine and we often do that mm-hmm. puzzle games it's like the viewership just goes to zero they're like, oh, this is so slow. <laughs> or on the other hand, they're trying to help us. But by the time they help us with their comment, either the comment is, it's so hard to describe what yeah, to yeah, do, yeah, yeah. or we're already two steps ahead. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, then we're like, move it to the left? Move, move what to the left? <laughs> I, I don't know what to move to the left now. It's so hard. Um, I think there's a place for video preview over your views of features computed by the developers. That's that's an interesting idea um, where the developers like, I mean, they would have to do that and like make their own video and point things out and show things. Um, yeah, 
Frustration is fun. Isometrics are my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I found out isometric games are definitely not Tanya's favorite. Yes. No, they are not. <laughs> no offense to any of the developers of isometric games. <laughs> Yeah. They cause me a lot of frustration. <laughs> they do. So. I feel like uh, with mouse and keyboard is really where like isometric games shine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like yes, like yes. old old school like controllers where you're sort of like kind of this you know in, in like and if there's any like screen rotation or like camera stuff, it's like oh my god, it breaks your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we usually play games that are adapted from the arcade. So if they had isometric views in the arcade usually the joystick is restricted to 45 degree angles and ours aren't mm -hmm. so we either have to rotate yeah. the joystick yeah. 45 Shift degrees yeah. or we have to rotate it in our mind no. and up is up and left left is left and down no. and both are not <laughs> both are not perfect because on a eight way joystick you accidentally press up and left instead of just up and the character might have priority on left instead mm. of up, and you go left instead of up, even though you did press up, yeah, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Did you? Didn't you have another friend come on the show early on? We had a we had a number of people come through. Um, usually only one, maybe two episodes. Yeah. Uh, Corey was on. Corey's been on a couple uh, times. Corey Hoggis. Uh And and Corey. Um... Was he on once? Once. He was on once. Yeah. Um, who else has been on the show? I think that's it. Has. I'm trying to think. Chris? The Corys. Yeah. <laughs> is no. Both Corys came on? I think. Corey Lake as well. Corey Lake, Corey Lake as, well. Is that, as well. Is he the one who played Frostbite? Corey Lake? Or Corey no, Hobbes? Corey Hobbes. Because Corey Lake's really good at, at the games, <laughs> oh, too, right? Oh, like, yeah. So I, I wasn't. Was, I was like. I'd love him to have come on again. Yeah. But he's yeah. so busy all the time, yeah. right? Oh, was uh, Tamara on once? I, yeah, yeah. I think so. Tamara, Darcy's wife, yeah. yes. Yeah. Tamara was on once. Yeah. Yes. Um, another young lady for the Atari Age <laughs> show. Oh, uh, yeah, Gio was on. Oh, yeah, just Gio. Just like a couple oh, yeah. episodes yeah. ago. Just a couple ep episodes ago. And yeah. she, helps, she helps out at the Atari um, uh, Awards sometimes. <laughs> yes. Hopefully she can help out this year as well. Mm -hmm. um, who else has been on the show? That's all I can think of. Has um, Chipcat been on the show? Maybe once. I know he helped out on the Atari Awards. That's Chris. Chris, yeah. Um, there might have been some other people, but I can't. I mean, it, they were a long time ago. It's pretty much gone to zero for guests. Like one time off guests. Yeah. I always like to see you suffering my games. Yeah, response to Erlen. <laughs> to <yeah. Erlen. laughs> um, Really enjoyed, enjoyed the interview show of ZPH earlier this year. Yeah, that's when Gio was on and interviewed us ab about um, about the show specifically. That was that was very interesting. Um, everybody who's been on the show needs their own IMDb entry. Um, yeah, YouTube shows, some YouTube shows has have their own IMDb entries. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Like, for example, Angry Video Game Nerd. I mm. mean, it's a very high-profile show. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them don't bother, because it's like, is that does that really fit on... Uh... But his is more of like a produced show. It's not like this live streaming kind of thing. Uh, it's an edited show. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's all the people. Uh, if we don't have any more questions, I think we'll uh, move on <laughs> to the news, and uh, we'll let Erlen go on with his uh, on with his night. Sounds good. Have any any more any more questions? Any more comments, er Erlen? Uh, yeah, just cool to be on and like uh, swing in and see all the stuff and in, in the adventures. And I was just remarking in the chat that it would be good to catch some of like the greatest hits next time I come through and see like some some games that have come through, some some like oldies and some goodies. And like it's been interesting to to, to play some like some games and see what's going on. I was going to ask um, you, James, do you think there's any risk of you running out of like the games? Because I remember when you told me this like 
you know, you're doing the show, it's like three new games every week. You're like, we're never gonna <laughs> run out, it's totally fine. But like five years later, what, like 900 hours of like games, like constantly <laughs> rotating? Like there's just, I'm just curious, obviously there is a deep um, community, but is there any like fear yeah. for you of like, man, what if I run out of like games to play? Obviously you can replay things and patch challenges and whatnot, but what's your, what's your appetite check now, five years in? Does it seem to be like booming or? We, uh, when we were doing just 2,600 games, there was absolutely a risk of running out of games mm. because we were playing games faster than they were being made during the year. And we're, I was kind of matching up new games with old games I haven't played. Yeah. And I was running out of, running old, out of old games, games you too. Played. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're were, limited. There's only, they're, since they've all been 90, made already. Since 94. Five or ninety-four. Right, but there That's are no they... new old games being made. <laughs> That's very true. No new old games being made. Um, but yeah, we were literally running out of games uh, of games of note. Like there's some games just like oh shoot the thing again. That's come because there's something called the Tinker Nut demo that was distributed early on with Batari Basic, and like a billion people made uh, hacks of the Tinker Nut mm. demo. <laughs> So none of those would have made it on the show because they're all just kind of reiteration of this the enemy game. coming down and you shooting it. Enemy coming down and tracking you perfectly and shooting it. So there's tons of those, but I wouldn't play those games. Like, why? What's the point? Uh, they're all exactly the same. Um, so yeah, we were literally running out of games. I was going through uh, Arena Foot's list uh, and he keeps a list of every single game that's been released. And I was seriously running out. But since adding 7800... Uh, almost caught up on those because it doesn't have an extensive of a library mm -hmm. actually i'm almost certain that i'm down to like a couple couple games left um and adding in uh 8-bit computer there's no chance of running out of games for the 8-bit computer because mm. homebrew <laughs> is a sliding scale on the 8-bit computer because there was always that ability to make your own games because it's a computer mm. Like, I made games on the Commodore 64 during its run of being sold in stores. Is that a homebrew? Kind of technically. You're at home brewing a game. So how far back do you go with 8-bit computer games? You could go way back to 1979 if you wanted, as long as it wasn't sold in a store. And then we added 5200, and we added Jaguar, and we've added Lynx now. So chance of running out is zero because every show i kind of go oh 2600 day 7800 day 8-bit day lynx day jaguar day um but it's been mostly 2600 because that's the biggest um homebrew scene in the ataris anyway and the second one is 8-bit so it's those kind of dominate and then i throw in a game every once in a while so now there is next to no chance of running out of games which is great and we so we do the show twice a week and we usually about three games a mm -hmm. show uh depending if they're smaller or bigger games some some shows like today we're just doing one game because we're blabbing on about stuff <laughs> <laughs> um 10 more years 10 yeah anything with 6502 is fair game to me I guess. Uh, yeah and we throw in c64 and in television and coleco and vectrex you know once in a while because you know i buy homebrew and play homebrew on those but it's not the core of of the show the core of the show is atari and i agree with miss command i love the vectrex and i really want to play more vectrex games we got to get that going sometimes so. mm -hmm. yeah and um i bought a polarizer <laughs> filter so we can shoot the tv with less reflections on yes. it yes yeah and i got some generic overlays as well for the vectrex and i'm trying to buy some other thing but the guy's not responding so i'm gonna have to poke him a bit more I uh, smoked 3D4. Uh, this is not the same hair. This is new hair. Um, <laughs> it keeps growing. It is all new and hair. And he yeah. keeps cutting it. Yeah, yeah. It just so keeps coming back. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have the same haircut in 10 years. This one has lasted more or less 10 years now. Mm -hmm. I kind of started growing it out um, 2010. After you came back from, uh, but it's been modified Australia. by this. Oh, right? this, this the beard. The beard's no. been back. The beard's two thousand five. Two thousand five. What? Twenty fifteen. Sorry, I always say that. Twenty 
I'm like 2005. 2015. That's a long like, time ago. It's very long time. 2015 and the hair long because when Tanya met me, it was like. Oh yeah. It was a short. It was a buzz cut. Yeah. Because that's what I had for work, and it's just easy. Just buzz it. Cheap, easy to do. Any <laughs> any any barber could do that. Now I pay ridiculous prices. I got, I got like one last question for each. What else had for each of you actually? Like you've got obviously, yeah. I feel like. The three of you have played probably more like games in this genre than a lot of people. And going into sort of the time before you started the show five years ago, what were your favorite sort of genres and sense of games? And like, have you discovered over five years of playing like new genres that you enjoy, the genres you haven't mm-hmm. liked, and sort of, sort of types? Because I feel like you, you're, you're all three of you are connoisseurs at this point of this this genre, <laughs> right? Like, I just, maybe connoisseurs is too intense of a word, but I'd be like just exposure to all these things. What what have what's kind of emerged in terms of your taste and how's this changed over the last five years i'll reiterate that to darcy yeah um he's asking uh, because we played so many games over the years have, have our our uh taste in games changed mm. from what we are used to playing on our own or before the show uh and for me um are you ready no i oh, have okay. to think about it for me my favorites are still my favorites uh shooters and platformers but my taste for games has expanded greatly, especially games that I was too afraid to play in the arcade because I was I would just die, um, or games that I just thought I was never interested in. Like a good example is Robotron 2084, um, and since John Champo was ported to the 2600, I'm like, oh, I understand the game now. I know what I'm supposed to do. And you get enough practice in these games that are ported to these comp- uh, systems because we're essentially forced to play them. We're like, we have to play them. We have to actually show them off decently enough that somebody out there gets an idea yeah. of what the game is about. And we don't want to be a complete failure at the game either. Um, so I think that my taste has expanded. My favorite genres haven't changed, but my taste has expanded. Um, yeah, I, I can't name particular genres that have been like, oh, I hate it before and now I I like it or can tolerate it. Mm. Um, but yeah, I I think I'm overall better at games since doing the show mm-hmm. and better at multiple genres as well. I still don't really like beat 'em ups <laughs> <laughs> in general. That's it. They're just very repetitive to me. Yeah. Like oh. You beat up some more people. Next level, more beat them. James's beat favorite genre is Galaga. True, true. <laughs> Shooters um, and platformers. I can't say one or the other because I love both of them. Yeah. I definitely shooter platformer. I definitely uh, like more varieties of games now of yeah. the Atari games now than I, I used to for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm definitely better at them, but that isn't really saying much. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, yeah, we've played games forever, going way, way, way back, right? Um, but obviously you play modern games you yeah. play fps's and um strategy games more than these sim- more simpler games yeah, right yeah because these systems lend themselves to 80s genres yeah or sure, even jaguar yeah. 90s early yeah. 90s jo- uh, genres um for me i didn't play a lot of older games before the show mm. not that i didn't have games um, you played the that NES. I was nostalgic for, but mm. I didn't in the run up to the show really play. Go back and play a lot of retro oh, yeah, games. Yeah, you sure, know, James yeah. James always had the systems, but I didn't really play them that much. So I think you develop a bit of an appreciation for you know games that are a little bit more simpler in how you play them. Um, but there are certain classic games that I think I didn't really enjoy as much and now because i've gotten to play them more and pac-man is one of those games i always Uh, i always looked down on pac-man as like oh ghost maze pac-man but we've i've turned around on that too we played it enough and i see the strategy in it i I really enjoy playing pac-man now which i never really did before yeah and also i have a much bigger appreciation for like going to arcades 
Um, cause we, we will like travel and be like, let's try this arcade. Let's go yeah. here. Let's go there. And I really, really enjoy going to arcades now. The, the problem, really enjoy it. The problem with arcades now is that we can do better if they're quarter, if you put quarters in them rather than all you can play. Yeah. And I'd rather I can play actually quarters. play the games. Yeah, yeah, Because <laughs> exactly. I'm better at arcade games now. Like, oh, I can last very long time on yeah. these, like, 20 minutes on some games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could play, pay a quarter instead of the $20 <laughs> an hour now. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's But you would funny. have a different answer if you realized that that $20 means that they stay open. And oh, hell yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Which means it's that they close. Always support the arcades. <laughs> always. always. Yeah. yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah, my, my uh, viewpoint on dark mazes has not changed i <laughs> hate dark maze games it's like oh it's dark and i'm bumping into walls and i have to memorize a maze oh my god it's a trifecta of n terribleness yes uh james is a great player he would do well in the atari age high score club i've participated in those and i come in the top 10 usually mm. um um, but I don't usually have a lot of time lately, but hopefully I can get into them because it's just been taking up a lot of my time, like making sure everything works and getting things up to speed and troubleshooting and preparing for shows. Um, but I have participated in those, especially the homebrew ones, because sometimes they do like the old games and then they throw in some homebrew and I'll do the homebrew ones. But I haven't had time to do those in a long time. Uh, I would say I'm an average player and I'm decent in most genres i wouldn't say i'm an expert because i'm never going to get number one i'm never going to beat all those good players i would or say, even top three. i would say above average you do you generally you can pick up most games and do pretty well at them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. thankfully i i think nobody would watch if it was a bunch of people that couldn't play games at all <laughs> be like oh my god these people are just terrible <laughs> they can't even get past level one like nobody would watch yeah so which is I'm, why I'm, i don't have my own show <laughs> so i'm so I'm happy that I'm at least decent enough <laughs> to get somewhere in the games. Yeah. That's that's the minimum I need to do. Yeah, no, yeah. you you there are games where you're able to do levels where to me it seems like I would just be like, no. <laughs> you made this level too hard, I, I quit now. <laughs> and you can do them and I'm like, okay. Well, yeah, that's I, good. Because <laughs> I um Upstairs on our modern systems, I'm playing through the Angry Video Game Nerd video game. Yeah. Um, it's unbelievably brutal. Like, it's engineered to be brutal. <clears throat> it's a platformer where everything kills you, and it's full of things. Um, but you get to play it over and over again. Yeah. You um, just respawn constantly, yeah, respawn. right? So yeah. I, I do like those really challenging games as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one show, maybe you can get the whole gang to play a four-player game. It is on the schedule. Not scheduled, but it's on the schedule, on a to-be-announced. And I'm going to make a list of all the four-player games. Um, so that includes, like, the Quadtari, Paddle Games, and Atari 5200 games. And there's some four-player 7800 games now as well, because of the Quadtari. Um, so we'll be playing uh, those during it. And so there's a, there's a fair amount, enough homebrew to fill a whole show with four player games. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I was reading about the guy who cheated on the 2600 Dragster game just yesterday. James, there's something to aspire to. Cheat. Cheat. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, no, there's no fun in cheating. I, I like to uh, mm. get real scores. I mean, it, it's actually, it seems more effort to cheat in video games than it is to actually get good at the video games. Yeah. Because you have to be so good at masking your cheating. Like looking at those, you know, videos of people that do cheat. Now you make like, me want to cheat. You're yeah. like, oh, it's a challenge. Oh, a challenge. Oh, I'm up for a challenge. It is a challenge. I shall cheat better than all the rest. Because they have to like, okay, they have to splice things together. But those splices have to be absolutely frame perfect. And their scores have to match perfectly. So if they're either rewind and, and if you're on real hardware like some people were using MAME instead of real hardware but oh my god it's crazy cheating is so hard um, 
Uh, Atari 20 Skylander Dude's talking about Safty. We're going to have a Safty movie marathon yes, coming up, are. Erlen. Yeah, that's the next. That's the next marathon <laughs> in uh, hopefully March. Another, early another March. rip your heart out kind of vibe, though, man. Yes. I, this oh. issue is some of these, like, you did the Aronofsky run, and I had to tap oh, out brutal. a little bit because it's just like. <laughs> just makes you feel so bad even one of those this is a thing that both those filmmakers are so good at what they do that i empathize so yeah. deeply with these characters that are just getting the shit kicked out of them which is this interesting <laughs> yeah. exercise where it's almost like if the movies if they were worse at what they did it wouldn't hit as hard but at the same time <laughs> it like pulls in like so much yeah and atari dude all those are those three are the best ones those are my one three of my favorite films actually that you just you just reference it's so interesting with the cheating thing too how like this line between what's cheating and like what's exploding a glitch like the the, yeah. the yes. famous stuff is all these like you know for some reason um uh like legend of zelda on like 64 like the amount of just like scientific effort that goes into like if you jump oh over this like boulder and turn left you like skip to like this area <laughs> and like you know like, and at a certain point you're like what's are we even playing a game like <laughs> Point on, like no, on the, like the Chinese version or Japanese version, you scroll yes. through the screens qu quicker, and you just watch these <laughs> these guys. And it's also like with the with the speed running too. I feel like it's kind of like like doping and like athletics, where if you get caught <laughs> doing it once, all of your life's work is really thrown out the window. You can be sort oh. of trusted. So I don't think it's worth yeah. it truly to like cheat on these things but then also like you think about all these like famous examples of old guys being like just cleaving to like these high scores they had like 30 oh, years yeah. ago being like i'm gonna sue you and you're like dude like like this is like move on it's okay this 30 <laughs> years ago you can you can move forward with your life you don't need to cleave to this photoshop job you did on like <laughs> yeah. on like you know drag racer like it's it's okay yeah, I've been enjoying watching Carl Jobst um, mm -hmm. channel. He, oh, he, he really, really gets into it. I think you introduced me to that. You absolute channel. legends. <laughs> yeah. You absolute yeah, legends. Yeah. So yeah. Um, hmm? You can't hear any of the stuff we're saying. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It's 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 really interesting watching the speed running. Um, either both l like playing the game properly, or like in any percent where they can just use glitches and stuff. Uh, both are vastly entertaining absolutely amazing i also think just the, the um, human experience too of just someone just grinding away on like a game and just like pushing it to the absolute limits and that like experience of like achieving this high score and being like man this has been 20 years of my life to like arrive on this <laughs> thing you know and it's like i can also understand the feelings that are like so deeply entrenched where it's like for some people with speed running it's like you know that's, that's all they got it's like you can't take this away from yeah. me this is <laughs> by one thing and then for other people it's like you know professional gamers and all this stuff it's i love speedrunning communities though it's so fascinating seeing people just push the absolute limits of things mm -hmm. oh yeah i i love watching speedrunning um analysis sh uh youtube shows yeah there's so much fun uh question in the chat which homebrews from your early shows would you like to revisit now that you'd have more experience with putting on this show um some of the the show, the games that I would revisit would be games that have endings or like a final level or mm. something you can get to the end of um, something along the line like Super Cobra Arcade or things like that, where there's there is a final level. There's somewhere to somewhere to get to. And those would be prime candidates for After Darks, right? Mm. We wouldn't put them in the normal show again because we like to highlight new games on the on the new show on the newer shows but we we play them in after dark so i it it wouldn't be a bad idea to go through bad old oh boy that's a whole thing um to go through the old shows and go oh that that game yeah i remember that we didn't have enough time to to finish to it dive or... deep into the game yeah yeah <laughs> penalt that's that's a whole thing that that's what i was saying with rpgs the re like penalt is unbelievable but I have no idea how we would present that on the show where a game literally takes a hundred hours to play like 50 to a hundred hours, just, depending on how you play. Gotta just get like 24 pack and just, just grind. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, grind just, blast, just go, you know, like that, that, <laughs> what you do is that's not you, a bad idea. Like set aside a day and just go. Just I mean, you could stream it, it right? Yeah, oh, but yeah, then when it, you yeah. put it on YouTube, just put it at like double speed or triple speed. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good idea. 
Cats zooming around the floor. <laughs> so funny. Highlights reel. That sounds like work. Um, I do the show live because it's less work than editing a show. And I did do some. Like if you go that's why way you back, fast forward. It's it's like high it's like high highlight reel, but without right. doing any editing. Well, I do put in chapters. I was gonna so say that's why you chapter it. I would pay. Oh, we made especially with a game like that, like Penalt, I would go. Oh, we made it to this part. Yeah. Okay, there's another chapter, and then there's another chapter. Yeah. Yeah, RPGs after darks every second week, or we would do it on the weekend. It's like, Jeez. oh, we're not doing anything on Sunday. Mm. Let's put in five hours into Penalt. Mm -hmm. something like that penalt's not done yet so we can't really start playing it because it would just be erased and all yeah, yeah it would just be wrecked the game and i wouldn't want to start over um yeah so we're going to be playing a rat trap very soon uh any other questions i don't think so yeah uh because we should get to rat trap Yes. Okay, Erlen, thank you so much for the awesome questions and being here. And I'm very looking forward to having you back live on the show, as are a lot of people in the chat. Um, they haven't forgotten you, of course. Yeah, <laughs> and they're I, I waiting just, for you to come back. I actually assume that I, that I would be forgotten. So it's it's beautiful to think that there's that I haven't been. And just the love in the chat has been really cool. And I feel like I like the moderator today. I'm like responding. <laughs> like all this stuff is a, it's a cool place to be and like just so proud of you guys for like continuing to make the show i just feel like um when you told me like five years ago you can do the show i was uh, you know a little <laughs> once a week show i'm like yeah that'll that he'll definitely you know like that was my thought. That was a good thing. Hey. and it was amazing just like consistently showing up every week to this thing and yeah. seeing the viewership grow and like the story of the show sort of like you know evolve and change and expand and it really is this like adage in life of like consistency and just showing up and consistently doing something is like there's such a power in that and like i don't think you've missed your schedule barely at all over like the mm. years and it's amazing like that's yeah. really counts for so much more i'm just so proud of all of you guys for like continuing to do <laughs> it and it's fun to be the the zph uncle who shows up on <laughs> being like drinking his beer talking about safty movies like it's good <laughs> um, yeah have fun um with uh with the the show and thanks so much for having me on for the for the fifth uh, anniversary love all you guys. oh thank you for being here yeah. yeah it was wonderful having you on again and uh we will talk very very soon uh see you soon bye Erlen. Oh, bye, Erlen. bye bye yeah we really haven't missed um much like any shows or anything it was just yeah. talking about the consistency of it and this is definitely oh no no just keep no. facing this way no, oh you're I'm talking just, I'm just, putting just in... minimize that and the chat's already up is it yeah perfect okay just making sure um this is actually the longest running show that we've done like darcy and i used to do radio shows and stuff and our first one ran for a year and a half and we thought that was a long time oh my god a year and a half <laughs> that ran for a long time do we need uh, no, we can take these out. <laughs> Do you want to turn just... it off so the sound comes through? Uh, yes. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> but now it's like five years. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So and... you, you, none of your shows lasted five years? Uh, one that Sean did, he did it for exactly five years. Oh, really? That's, I think he stopped at five. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. And for one point, he was doing it every day, <laughs> every weekday. Yeah, was, I was listening to the podcast you were on. Oh, yeah. We were yeah, listening yeah. to it when we were in the, in the States, and it was funny because uh, I, I didn't know what it was, and I was like, <laughs> oh, it, this sounds like, it sounds a bit like James. This, it is this person well, who was not James. It? Tamara was, oh, had it playing, and okay. I didn't know what she was had playing. Oh. I, I was like, this person who was not James sounds a bit like James, but not exactly like him. <laughs> Because because That's, you know it's like it's recording so there's like right. uh, like multiple layers voices of sound layers of whatever EQing you know effects and what or, have you yeah and then we're watching it I said I said to Tamara I said oh it's funny because like this sounds like so much like James's story this could be James' story and she she said oh really could it and I was like you're making fun of me <laughs> that means it's James <laughs> oh that was, was pretty funny yeah. that's hilarious that's that funny that she played it and you didn't know what it was and you're like this is really familiar <laughs> it's funny that this person who sounds a little bit like James has like 
Like this sounds like, like that and, thing happened to Jeff. That's why he yeah. got if I, that and, movie is why he got into radio. That's so funny. Yeah. I guess and, I, and it makes sense keeps, that other people would be too. Oh yeah. Somehow keeps referencing his friend Darcy that he's no, doing but, all these radio he hadn't, shows. He hadn't mentioned me at that point. And I hadn't, yeah, yeah. Say, and I hadn't said I ranch yet or long. anything. Yeah. No. 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 It wasn't <laughs> that long. It wasn't. I wasn't like clueless that long. It's just that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh. Damn, this mic quality is nice, friends. Don't normally watch it. <laughs> this is a professional is a good mic. recording microphone, and we have compression and everything on it. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I strive for quality. <laughs> we don't always achieve it, but I strive <laughs> for it, no matter what. Um, thank you. Except for editing after the fact. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Not going to do it. I refuse. <laughs> Too much work. Uh, okay, we're on to the news, amazingly. News? Yeah. I it's... thought we already did that. <laughs> no. Well, that was part of the news. All right. Fair enough. Um, there was a... Oh, cake. Uh, cake. There's cake? cake coming yeah, out at some point, cake. right? Yeah, there's cake. We'll do that once we get the game going, okay. I think. Um, there was a, a demo, he explicitly said it was not a game, um, of GA+, Plus, which is a Galaga sequel from Steven, was posted in the... Uh, forums. I think this is the first news item. Here we go. Uh, let me get this up on the screen. The cake is not a lie. It might not well, be cake, it's kind of but a... it's not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fail cake. <laughs> um, he says, okay, I finally have something to share. First and foremost, I'm not porting Galaga. <laughs> I am not working on a game. I swear I influenced that because I put the games on the list and some people are like, this isn't a game yet. Don't put it on the list. Mm -hmm. So I think people are starting to put that disclaimer so I don't accidentally put it on the list. And they also put it so like people go, oh, you're working on this game? Have you have you put more effort into this game? Um, I said that one time. Yeah, and there's some people, I think it's Carl G has a whole thread of, of, of stuff. It's like, these aren't games. They're not games. Don't put them. Don't ask me for them. <laughs> Um, GA plus, yeah. So let me show you. Um, I bet there's a Twitch plugin you can get for subtitles. That would be that would be good. That should be good for us, for like uh, Darcy, so he can see what we're saying, what Erlen's saying. <laughs> uh, yeah. If it was real time, it, 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 yeah. yeah, really. <laughs> so I don't believe it. I don't think I don't think Twitch can read lips any better than a Zoom is real time. Real time subtitles, actually. I'm only um. kidding. <laughs> okay, I was, it's I was, real. Yeah, I don't think they read lips, though. Uh, not lips. That's no. what I was saying. <laughs> Here we go. So, this is a VBXE demo. Let me just speed this up. Yeah. Is that speeding it up? I don't think it's speeding it up. Why is that one speeding it up? Oh. Oh, there we go. Check that out. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so, GA Plus is a 1984 Namco game that was only ported to the C64. And a demastered version was made for 1996 PlayStation Namco Museum Volume 2. And somebody was able to extract it from the PlayStation game and put it on a cart. Uh, not a real game released by Nintendo. Uh, this is a fairly newish one. Um, that was, and I bought it, of course, because I love Galaga. Um, but take a look at those graphics. Too loud! I know, it's amazing. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's because I had to put something in effect for Erlen. I had to turn off a, a thing. Yeah, sorry, it'll be back now. Check, check, check. Gap plus, not GA plus. Gap plus. Oh, that makes more sense. Like Galaga plus, Gap yeah. plus. Gap plus. Uh, nice. Nice. Um, but hopefully um, somebody continues on with this because, oh my God, look, look at that nice. background. Yeah. And this is for the oh, Atari the 8 bit system. That. That's beautiful. Yeah, and great. The I love the. Great. What, what do you call that? The um, the glass piece on top of the. Uh, the marquee. The marquee. Mm. Yeah, I'm still looking for Valley a Galaga Bay original Galaga marquee. Mm. Um, for some reason, they're just nowhere. 
Like, there's tons of other games. Galaga is one of the best-selling games ever. You'd think there'd be lots of You'd them You'd think around. there'd be cheap and lots of them. But mm. I've, I've been to so many conventions. I've looked online forever. There's lots of reproductions, but I don't want a reproduction. I want a slightly used, barely scratched Galaga marquee that mm. I can frame. Yeah, I don't want much. I just want <laughs> almost Everything. the highest quality marquee that ever existed. Exactly. Graded, <laughs> vacuum Graded. sealed in a plastic no, container. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't want any of that. Okay. Um, I have to go. Okay. Oh. I mean, I'm going to go. I don't, as I said, I could catch a later bus, but could. it ages me. <laughs> to be racing through the mountains on the way to the last ferry of the day oh, with a question yes. mark on will we get there on time. Fair enough. And that happened not too long ago. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, well, thank you for <laughs> being here for the... Yay. Yeah, and thank you for being for the, here. That's right. That's it's right. you who make this show. <laughs> well, quit pandering the show, to the people. But you make it worth making. That's right. All if right, nobody so watched, good. we wouldn't make it. Okay, bye, Darcy. Bye, Darcy. <laughs> Should I? Oh. Uh. Well. Yeah. Let him out. No. No. Not yet. Once he's gone, you no. can lock the door. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah. Do you want me to go we'll up right now? It. Uh. Sure. I'll just do the news. Yeah. Bye. News. I'll be right back. Back to doing it myself. Yeah. Keep the door open. <laughs> Keep the door open. Ah. Leave it open. Yeah. So the cats can come in and out. Oh no! I wasn't gonna close it. Okay. Um. So that's really exciting. Hopefully, uh, that comes to fruition. I love GA plus. Obviously, that's a huge, a lot of, a lot of work um, to do. Um, now I am going to show a thing that Thomas Yetch was working on, and uh, let me show you the post he made about it. I've been meaning to do this for a while to show this off. While testing the Core Two in the Zero Page Homebrew stream, James mentioned that some kind of acceleration would be nice. This should allow slow, precise, and fast accelerated paddle position. Now he's, he's not talking about the actual paddle, he's talking about the driving controller. Uh, finally motivated me to have a closer look at this idea. The attached ROMs show the result. Please give it a try, especially using real hardware. The blue paddle moves one pixel per driving controller step. It is obvious that this would be not fast enough for long range paddle. The red paddle uses my new acceleration code. You can move at the whole range, 152 pixels, quite fast and still pretty precisely position it pixel perfect. I hope this will work well enough for real games too. I think this idea could be used for games like Tempest or to convert existing joystick games, which would work better with a paddle, into a, a, using the driver controller instead. This is much easier, and much more feasible than adding paddle code into existing kernel. I've attached the non Optimize source code too. You can easily tweak the acceleration deceleration using the constants acceleration variable deceleration and minimum deceleration So I thought this idea would be perfect for driving controllers because of those reasons If you'd use a paddles paddles are great um, Paddles don't spin all the way around though. That's one bad thing about them and paddles you have to constantly be reading them uh, when you're making your game so it it uses a lot of time up. Uh, Thomas Yench did this. So I'm going to show this right now um, using the paddle controller because I've always thought about this for the longest time. And I thought paddle controllers are uh, criminally underused uh, on the system. They're such a great thing because they can continuously scroll, scroll, scroll around, right? Uh, so dynamic driving. Okay, so the one on the top, the blue one, is normal. Normal driving controller, I think it's one step per turn. There's no acceleration on the blue. So if I, if I move it slowly, the red and the blue are normal. But if I start moving a little bit faster, the accelerated one moves faster. But if I move it slow again, see they move at the same rate but I can move it faster and the red one moves faster. So this also, so this gives you precision when moving it slower, but lots of speed when moving it faster. Cool. And I was just propositioning this as like, oh, I bet you could put acceleration on a driving controller mm -hmm. and it would work. 
And Thomas Yanch has proved it right. Wow. Because <laughs> we were talking wow. about the core, right? Okay. And the core moved, used the uh, driving controllers, but they were a one-to-one -one ratio. Mm. And they weren't accelerated. And I made the comment, if these were this, it was accelerated, then it would work. And it does work. <gasps> it works perfectly. Oh, wow. Like you can go... If you go too fast, it starts skipping. Yeah. Because the driving controller acts kind of like a joystick that you're moving around in a um, in a in a circle. It it uh, it. I think I have some notes here about it. Um, it uses a 16-stop rotary encoder, but produces pulse strains on pin one and two. Uh, it works the same fashion as joystick pressing each direction switch in turn as it's spun. Uh, programs had to watch the sequence of bit in the shadow registers in order to tell them if the controller was being spun to the right or left. Uh, the OS itself did not attempt to interpret this to provide left and right instructions for the programmer. And Thomas Yench has made, uh, I'm guessing, a Batari basic um, uh, read... Uh, um, interface so you can use this in Batari Basic games. Cool. Uh, the red one has some thrust, yes. So, so yeah, cool. for Tempest and, and Thomas Yant said, yeah, this could be good for Tempest for or any game. You can continuously spin it. So you can have games that go in a circle like mm -hmm. the core two that he was working on. That was cool. Um, or Tempest that go in a circle. And mm. this driving controller is hardly ever used in games. And I think this innovation that Thomas Yench has implemented will make it possible mm -hmm. but you just can't spin it too fast you can't spin it faster than a full rotation before it's red again okay um otherwise it thinks that you're moving backwards or you're not moving at all okay it's kind of like watching uh filming a a, a tire on a car with a camera yes yes it looks like it's standing still because it's moving so fast it's moving at the same rate the camera is pulling yeah. the wheel. Yeah. If that's a good analogy, it's probably not because I don't know how many people <laughs> know about that effect. But yeah, it's definitely like, look how fast I can go from the left to the right. Very, very, like totally fast enough with the acceleration. But let's line it up with the blue. There we go. Yeah, if you do it nice. slowly, it stays. It's one to one. It, it tracks. Absolutely amazing, amazing. Yeah, I honestly didn't know Quadrant. that the driving controller existed until like a year ago. I thought oh. it was just the paddle controller. Yeah, they're they're not that used all that often in games. No. Oh my god, yeah. hardly ever used. And this works on the 7800 and Atari 8-bit too. Really? It's cool. a, it's just a joystick and That's a joystick cool. button. That's all it is. Um, so, you know, Thomas Yench may have uh, cracked the code for this. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, he uh, followed up with my suggestion. Oh, Dar I thought it would be possible. Darcy never had any cake. Uh, no, he, he probably wouldn't want it anyway. <laughs> we will have cake. Yes. Cake for us. More cake for Yay! us and the cats. Yay. Uh, and that is all the news that is fit to uh, tell. Um, <laughs> I don't know where that is from, but it's from somewhere. Now we're going to go to uh, Quadtari Plus 4 driving controllers. Mm. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> James's mind just exploded. Yes, that is absolutely true. The the driving controllers would work mm. with a Quadtari because those act as joysticks. So now you can have four player, I mean, you could do it with joysticks too, but you can have four player. Now you could do that with Quadtari anyway with mm. paddles, but anyway, you can, yes, it's true. But they take up, they do take up a, a whole port, right? They're not, um, yeah, anyway. Or just make paddle games. Exactly, Carl Jesus. <laughs> uh, I thought you were like, oh my god, you're onto something. Oh no, wait. It doesn't matter. Uh, so it's time for uh, Rat Trap on the 7800. Um, this is by uh, 20th Street Arcade, Daryl Genther, uh, Daryl1970. This first posted in the, in the um, forums on January 27th, 2023. This build is from two days ago. Uh, this is the full version full the demo is posted in the in the uh forums okay but um daryl was nice enough to give us the full version the demo is limited by two you can play two levels um, but this is unlimited levels you can mm. play 
Uh, he also made Pengo and Popeye 7800, which nice. are also awesome amazing games. games. Awesome, awesome. Um, and this game is controlled. This is this, the only game outside of Attack of the Petsky Robots that uses this controller, really? the SNES Ooh. controller. So I'm really happy to see the adoption of more games using this uh, special SNES adapter. to Atari adapter. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen some plans um, that have a nice enclosure for it now. Oh, good. So I'm looking it's forward to getting naked, more. Naked board. <laughs> naked board sitting, sitting on, on the, the floor getting licked by yeah, cats and naughty cats. who knows what else. Yeah. Are you going to lick it? No. No. Don't it doesn't, it's not tasty. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, but first we're cat. going to look at a... Yeah, Daryl is on a roll. He's an yeah. amazing developer. First we're going to look at the arcade version of Mousetrap, of which this is a port of. Um, and I don't think we've actually even uh, ever looked at this before. Um, here we go. Just turn it down. Let's turn it down a little bit more. There you go. So you get a good idea of what the arcade looks like. It's Wait till you see it. This is a great version. So Mousetrap, Mousetrap is a maze video game developed by Exidy and released in the arcades in 1981. It's similar to Pac-Man. There's a lot of maze games back then. Uh, where the main ga uh, character is replaced by a mouse, the dots are with cheese, the ghosts with cats, and the energizers with bones. Uh, after collecting a bone, pressing a button turns the mouse into a dog for a brief period of time. So you get to store up your power pellets. You can use them anytime you want. They're not automatic. Um, Color-coded doors in the maze can be toggled by pressing a button of the same color. Mm. That's a little different here. Uh, a hawk periodically flies across the maze unrestricted by walls. You can see it there. Yeah. Uh, there was ports for the 2600, ColecoVision, and Intellivision. And they're not bad. They're pretty good. Uh, in 1982, Buckner and Garcia recorded a song, Mousetrap, using sound effects from the game and released on an album, Pac-Man Fever. A very silly, but very popular song. When they re-recorded the album in 1999, they were unable to find a machine and instead used dog and cat sounds oh, recorded wow. in a pet store. Oh my goodness. Which is so funny. Yeah. Have a good night, D-Train. Good night, D-Train. Thanks for hanging out for our five-year celebration. Is that vector-based? No. No, but it does, especially oh, when the walls are lines like that, it always has a bit of that look, doesn't it? I bet you could, well, it would be challenging with the colored doors. You'd have to have a color vector yeah. screen. Mm -hmm. um, or you could have, I don't know if the maze changes much, but if the maze doesn't change and the doors, I think the maze changes, so that wouldn't work. On a Vectrex, you could have an overlay where those doors are specifically, because that's all, the, unless a cat passes through them or you pass mm -hmm. through them. Um, and actually, it has four buttons on the Vectrex. Mm -hmm. Perfect translation. But the colors might be di raster? difficult. Raster. raster. Yeah, it is raster. Mm -hmm. But I could see it working on a, on a vector display. Um, okay, so let's get to the game now. Pause that. Do I have anything else to show about that? No. Okay. Now we'll switch over to the 7800 here. You guys can't see it. Boom, boom, boom. There we are. Now load it up. Oh, this is master. Um, very cute. Very cute. So, Are you going to start? Uh, no, but I'm just going to go into the settings. Look at that mouse. And change it to rat trap first. Because <laughs> uh, in the settings you can say mouse trap or rat trap, but it's gotcha. called rat trap. Rat trap. Fair enough. There's a door pause. Not 
sure what that is, but we'll find out. There's credits. Program, music, yes. Daryl Genther, Very 20th nice. Street Arcade, in memory of Paul Genther, 1935 to 2022. Um, and uh, this can save your high scores, but we'll get to that. Oh, let's change to standard. So there's one player and two players. So we'll do one player. Sounds good. Um, there is also um, two different controller methods. Well, actually, multiple controller methods, but with this, there's two. Because some people in the uh, forums were going, we're in Europe. Our buttons are colored. Oh. And they actually can correspond to the but uh, the doors in the game. Really? And so he added in. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so he added in like standard because we just have boring purple buttons here. Yeah. Uh, in North America, or color, buttons, color buttons for button. European uh, controllers. Yes. But we're just going to go for standard. Uh, and we will set it to novice to start out with. Okay, so this is the dog button. Yeah. And then each of these other buttons mm -hmm. are the doors. Okay. Um, I think it's red, yellow, blue. Okay. But I would practice the doors a lot so you kind of get uh, muscle memory for okay. what colors are what, because they'll be very important. And then I will read about the game as you play. So mouse eats cheese. Uh, the cheese and the bone. Dog Doggy eats, eats the, the cat. cat and, um, and the cheese. And the cheese. I didn't press any. Well, you're the dog. You turn into dog. So you could, the dog yeah. can also eat the, the mouse and, uh, sorry, eats the cheese and the cats and the bone. Because when you're a dog, you're like on the power pellet, right? Yeah, on the bone, right? Yep. Yeah. And uh, then we'll wait till that screen comes up again with the instructions, with the cute instructions. Love the border. Uh, I love that little mouse face. And so cute. Has three high score tables, the top five people in the d three different difficulties. Door pause was oh, requested. Wait, wait, oh. wait one second. Uh, the cats eat the mouse. The bird eats the uh, mouse and the dog. So you're not safe from the bird. And the inn makes you go to one of those four corners. Gotcha. And it says it makes the bird stupid. <laughs> so the bird gets confused okay. when you go through that inn. Uh, door pause was requested in the forum. With the standard joystick holding the right button combined with a joystick direction changes the corresponding door. Oh, okay. And so then it's holding the button will pause the mouse if is if blah, mouse if the setting is on. Okay, so it's for red, yellow, blue. Red is left button. Yellow is top. Blue is right. Red, yellow, blue. Excellent. Blah, bottom is dog. Select pauses with the SNES controller. Okay. Nice. Uh, oh. I want to play. Yeah. <laughs> So you so, do start off with one bone. Okay. So I practice the doors. So you know which one is which and you can memorize it. So now you've stored up three bones. So if you're ever stuck or you need to get through a passage where there's a cat, you just press the uh, dog button, which is the bottom button, and you'll turn into a dog for a short period of time and you eat those cats. There's also uh, cheese and other assorted items. There's a cheese at the top. You want to get all those. Lots of bonus points. Ooh, bonus points. And you get bonus points at the end of the level too for eating cheese. And that's pretty much the game. It's it's like uh, it's like Ladybug. Yeah, uh -huh. very Ladybug. -like. Very Ladybug, especially with the doors. Now the cats are. S you want to get that paper clip there. Lots of points. Is that a paper clip? Yeah. I thought it was like a whirlpool or something. Go it does down. look like a Come whirlpool. Why won't you go down? There. It's a D-pad. I am going to get a uh, joystick, an SNES joystick some way. Get all the cheese is a universal life advice. That's true. There are 31 different prizes. Wow, that's that's a lot. Were there 31 in the arcade game as well? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, get the mud, get the cats, get the cats. Using eight-way D-pad, yeah. You need a four-way uh, joystick. Oh, you trapped a cat. <laughs> Always get those uh, bonus. Ah, oh, you can turn yourself into a dog. Oh, I forget that. Yum, 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 yum. Come on, wake up. Ah, dog. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't hit quite fast enough there. Okay, so uh, what he posted in the forum around January 6th, I plotted a mouse on screen. I had a couple ideas in mind. I wanted to plot a 320 mode mouse, like the one on Exidy's Mousetrap. The game is pretty basic as far as graphics. The sprites are single color, and I thought it would look pretty cool on the 7800. See, points for cheese. Yay! 10,000 points. That's good for free lives. Cheese points. Oh, the dog comes out. Oh, you were still a dog when you finished. Yeah. It carries over. Ooh, wow, that's, nice. that's unusual for a game to carry over your uh, power-up. Ah. There's also the inn, which will take you randomly to one of those four corners. Ah. So if you're stuck in the middle, um, or the bird is chasing you. Oh, come on. I don't know if the bird is in the beginner mode, though, or comes later. I feel like there should be a Pac-Man-style game where all the bonus prizes are just different types of cheese. <laughs> Uh, the mouse and dog looked great. This got me wondering uh, if I could create a similar experience to the arcade. I had a little challenge recreating the maze. Uh, this is Daryl talking in the, in the forums. Followed by the challenge of getting the mouse to follow the maze. With this, I realized the maze would need to change based on the doors that are switched. I thought this would be a perfect candidate for the SNES controller, SNES 2 Atari. At this point, I started looking at the ColecoVision port because I figured that was the bar for home ports. I started to think that while 320 mode would be cool, the 7800 strength is in its multicolor sprites. I decided to redraw the sprites to what I thought played to the 7800 strengths. Once I did this, I got the mouse to follow the maze. Next, I worked on the switching doors. Yay! Uh, all of the maze routines were reusable for the cats, so it really wasn't too much to get the cats into the maze. Uh, I created a few sound effects to handle eating, barking, and screeching. Uh, I decided to to reuse the Pentago music engine built by Playsoft. I started picking out some of the tunes. The game just happened. I added scoring, live, sound effect, high score saves, and some title screens. The game has a way to go since the game was brought to light in the forums. I decided to throw a demo together. Please note that it is a very early demo and I have a lot to add. However, there's a lot here that I'm pretty happy about. This looks good. Oh, it looks beautiful. The, the, the character graphics, especially for the mouse, is so cute. Just like uh, Pac-Man, the later the levels, the shorter the dog phase. Park. I always loved the sound effect. Ooh, oh, a little too late. too late. In the Coleco version, uh, and the Atari 2600 version for the dog, they did a really good job with that. The sound effects are amazing here. I'm guessing. This is all TIA uh, sound effects, um, Daryl. Unless I missed it. Oh, I hope that was caught on camera. It was. Atari just tossed his bunny into the middle of the room. Good kitty. Did you bring this down for us? Let me get it. Go get it. Good kitty. So there is a demo of this game in the forums uh, right now that you can uh, download. Uh, it'll allow you to play. The sound effects are amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and the music for TIA? Oh my god. It's astounding. What people are um, able to do for sound effects and music using the 1977 sound chip, it just astounds me every time. S. Ramirez says, this is already pretty polished. Yeah, I, I'm always, uh, I always find it funny when uh, developers put, I've got a long way to go with this game and, and we're playing going, this is amazing. Like what is left to do? And he didn't even list it. He just said, I, to do, I have a lot of lot to do. I'm not even gonna list it here. But I'm guessing there's a lot of tweaks and a lot of um, things under the hood that we're not seeing. The 7800 resources allow you to do quite a bit with the TIA sound effects. Oh, Revan Tooley said that. So there's more flexibility with the way the 7800 accesses the... Um... Oh, hit the wrong button. Oh, no. It's like red, yellow, blue. Oh, and hit you're switching doors? Yeah, I just oh. hit the wrong one. That's okay. The cats are fast now. I thought you were talking about this little little black here. Well, that cat's fast now, too. Oh, he's so cute. He's looking up at you. Looking up at you. Oh, oh. 
We have no bones. Just a warning. Ah! Oh my god. Tactical. It's oh open. boy. Jeez. <laughs> Those cats are mad. I know. Mad. I would... I don't know what you'd do. Start switching the red or blue doors to block them off. And let that cat out of the middle. There you go. Yeah, you need to... Oh, that cat's mad. <laughs> um, and Daryl said uh, the theme music is... Ah! Oh, yeah. You got cornered. Stuck. So uh, stuck. Oh, still got lots of my stuff. Kind of. But you don't get your... You don't get bones, You though. don't get your bones back. You start with zero bones again. Uh-oh. Oh, trap yourself in there. Oh, good. Good one. Let's just have to get that. That cat's not... Go, go, go. Yellow. Go. Oh, oh just. Just in time. The theme wow. music is borrowed from the Buckner and Garcia song Mousetrap off the Pac-Man Fever album. Very nice. applicable. I also have a hawk, now, hawk sound now. I added settings. I've, I've added so much since then, I think it's close to being done. Oh, okay. Oh, I missed that trap. Let's see. Um, when I posted that, the doors could close onto the mouse without bumping them. I was using the eating sound for the door change. Now there's a different sound for each door. It's hard sometimes with the D-pad. You kind of it accidentally is. go up the, a way you didn't mean to. Oh, God. They're so fast. The cheese. You're missing the cheese. Oh, I got the cheese last time. Oh, no, the little ones. Oh, well, I'm getting them where I can. <laughs> oh, you got an incredible rank. Woohoo, incredible. Too easy without the hawk, yeah. So there we'll we show you the, um, so if we go down to settings, um, you can clear the scores you, right Darryl. from the menu. Yeah. Um, cause some games you have to like hold down buttons while you turn it on. Oh, I see. But, uh, Daryl has built this in, in 320 mode. So really high resolution, um, novice, you can clear out each score table if or you want. Or all of them. Or all of them. Nice. Or you can press the button and be the dog. Cute. And clear it out as the dog. There you go. <laughs> and you can change to mouse trap or rat trap. Or you can uh, reset the six. Novice is very easy starting with four cats. Oh, okay. So we're going to go to arcade so we can see the bird. Okay. Even though arcade is a lot harder. <laughs> This really looks good and appears to play well. Yes, it does. It plays so well. Wow. Look at those cats. Look oh, at those they're, tails. They're feisty cats. Uh, yeah, this starts a lot faster than novice mode. Oh, there's the bird. There's the bird. And it does not help you being a dog. No. When the bird comes you, out. You still have to dodge, right? Yep. Oh God! What? He, no, got, he, he released. Out. He released Damn right it. on top of you. Uh, it's well, dangerous. Was... It's dangerous being around there. I, I was uh, unlucky, I think. Well, bit on me. Go in the center, says Daryl. <laughs> yep. In. Yep. That's how you get uh, away from the bird. Ah. Ah! No, I didn't even see the bird right coming. Right, the bird. In makes the hawk stupid. That's what it says on the in the screen. I love that. We want to see the hawk get stupid. Okay, we'll do that. Ah, it's a good way to escape too. Oh yep. boy, uh, it's dog time. Let's head over to that area over there if I can use this stupid D-pad. Oh, yeah, the D-pad is a little frustrating. Oh god! Ah, that doesn't ah. help, and I wasted a bone. Ah. Yep. Oh no, I didn't waste it because I had no lives left. I'm gonna play again. Okay. Oh, it'll make the hawk reverse and leave. Mm. Literally go into it. I will, I will, I will. Okay, I'll <laughs> hang around there. 
let's let's uh, open the door and trap myself in here and watch for the hawk. Oh, trap, trap the cats! Trap all the cats! There he is. See, turned around. Ah, he goes back to the corners. He actually leaves. Yeah, he like reverses courses and Interesting. Oh, boy. It's a little too late. Trapped. <laughs> oh, he's coming for me. Uh, Sometimes you need to hold on to the bones just so that you don't you do. die. Yeah, if you're trapped, it's like... Mm. Bird is brutal. Yeah, this Re Revan Tooley says this does feel like a combination of years of various maze games, yeah. creating the ultimate Pac-Man ladybug lock and chase. It pretty much is. It has so many features, nice. especially the feature of like holding on to your powers. Mm -hmm. Ooh, can I get it? Oh, just in time. oh I pressed oh, the button no. and I didn't have another le bone left. Oh no. Well, I'm almost. I'm getting better because no I've almost bones. cleared the first level. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Good stuff. Get more bones. Bonus score for cheeses. <laughs> now I die. <laughs> I'm sure, there's an optimal way of playing the game. You get four bones per level. Yeah. Oh god. Oh god. Gotta get what, out of there. What do you there was a cat up I guess you I could have bone. You could change the bone, open the door. Yeah. Killed a few cats. Oh. Oh, oh don't no, no. They just go rest somewhere. Oh I see. They're tired. Oh, don't cover his ears. <laughs> no. How are you doing, Sprite? Oh my god, I've seen cats. You never you never hear Sprite cry. Other other than oh, you know during food? treat time. Oh god! Ooh. But this cat is the most vocal cat when it's lunchtime. Me, 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 yeah, me, it's it's me, insane. Me, me, me. And also, we have to get video of him jumping, because oh, we yes. have this little we have this little contraption. It's a wire with a little cardboard bit at the end, and he must jump like eight times his height. It's ridiculous how high this cat can jump. Three background tunes, nice. I've never seen the arcade game. I've never seen this in an arcade. And, and like the um, musician said, they couldn't find an arcade game of this. I'm not sure how rare it is. Mm. So let's read some strategy for this game from the uh, strategy wiki on Mousetrap. Um, mouse. Your position in the mousetrap is represented by this mouse face. You can move through the maze in an effort to eat every piece of cheese. If you eat all the cheese, you will be awarded 10,000 bonus points and, and advance to a new stage. As a mouse, you can avoid contact. You must avoid contact with any cat and the hawk. Now we know all this. Um, so for the points for eating the cats as a dog, uh, 100 for the first cat, 300 for second, 500 for third, 700 points for the next three cats, and 900 for every cat thereafter. How many cats can you? Oh, there's there's five cats on the screen. Oh, you're playing arcade. Yeah, oh boy. Oh, it's very hard. It's a big step up. It yeah. is, from novice. We're going to have to play uh, expert and die immediately and see how that goes. Oh, come on. This thing is making me nuts. There we go. Oh, yeah. There's so many power-up uh, bonus items. There's a gun as a, and a knife as a, a bonus item. Hammer, a dice, a telephone, a, a pair. My scoring may be off. I thought it was 100, 300, 500, 700, 900. It is, it says, <laughs> but 700 for the next three cats. So it's 700, 700, 700, then it goes to 900. So it just needs to be adjusted a bit. Oh boy. Gotta go to the end. Oh, it's covered. Oh, oh, dog. You don't have dog. Oh no. Oh, this is very hard. <laughs> The hawk appears randomly throughout the game. 
flying in eight different directions. Its appearance is accompanied by the sound of a hawk's cry. It is a threat to you whether you're a mouse or a dog. Yeah. Must be avoided at all costs. Your only weapon that you have against it, the hawk, is the inbox at the very center of the maze. Every time you enter the inbox, whether it's a hawk or not, you're sent to a randomly chosen corner at the maze, which is another good way to escape the cat. If a hawk happens to be present when you enter the box, it turns stupid. It's even, it's in the arcade, it's turned stupid. And oh, decides to lead the stage, uh, making the maze a little safer until it returns. Um, the bonus items will only return to the wedge of cheese if you lose a life. Oh, wait a second. Throughout the game, a bonus item will appear in a predetermined location in the maze. You can collect these items for bonus points. If you complete a stage, the next stage will contain the last bonus item that you're up to. The bonus items will only return to the wedge of cheese if you lose a life, or if you manage to collect the 7200 point handgun. Since the bonuses will continue to rise in value as long as you don't die, it's more important to stay alive and claim them when it's safe than to get them as soon as possible. They won't ever disappear, no matter how long it takes you to collect them. Oh my god, how would you ever make it up to the gun? You have to collect... how many? 32 different bonus items. Ugh. If you die once, it resets to the cheese again. Really? And it goes up in points and changes, so... Wow. You have to be an expert to see the top uh, bonus. So, yeah, Atari 2600 version. Um, and it changed all the doors at once on the 2600 version because oh. it only had one button. So you had to hold the button for the doors to change. Um, the Coleco version, you could change the doors with the number pad, so they could do that. And in television as well, uh, using the number pad, you can change the doors. Oh, you almost hit the pocket. There you go. So there really isn't any hints that I can see here. Let's see. Let's oh. see if there's any hints that I missed. No, they don't really have any uh, actual hints <laughs> how to play. It's all in the game, really. I guess the Buckner and Garcia never heard of MAME. That's a shame. Yeah, 99. MAME was was totally a thing. So they could have been able to do it. Like, if they just asked around, Ah, oh, run! Ooh, lots of cats. Lots of cats. Oh. My, uh, if you get killed by the hawk, the player up uh, sequence instructs. Player up sequence. The gun is easy to get in novice. Just don't eat a lot of the small cheese. Okay, I see. You can just stay around on like one level, and the the, the different um, bonuses will come on the screen. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, perfect one! Nice. Hint: the cats pause before they're about to leave the pen. Oh, thank you. See, there's a good hint. Thank you, Daryl. No! Oh, no! Oh, you could have gone in the end. Ugh. Might have thrown you on no, the No, I was trying to get around, but uh, didn't, didn't do it. One! There was one left. Boo. My turn. Cat. Um, so let's take a look at the arcade version. Oh. Or not the arcade. The, the expert? expert oh, version. Oh, ho, ho. Before we move, I want to try and get all the prizes. Like, you can just get them on one level and just keep oh. waiting. Yeah, keep waiting for them yeah. to respawn. So you get three lives on the expert level. Oh my god, the cats are like... Crazy? All catnipped up. Or actually the opposite of catnipped oh, up. Oh, catnip. Ooh. I wonder if anyone wants to give the cats catnip. Ah! ah, ah. Oh, I should have... Oh, no, no bites! He'd rather just bite me. Don't bite. You're riling out him up and no. he's biting me. No, 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 no. Oh, that no. cat's coming out because he's pausing. Ah! Yeah, oh. I'm sorry. I moved you. Mur, why did you move me? Because you were biting James because I was bugging you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, no. I'm sorry, Dad. He's so soft. He's pretty soft yeah, still. Yeah, he's a silky cat. Oh, they kind of run away. Well, oh, can I get all the cats? Go, go, go. Nice. In. Nice. Oh, that's not a good one. It's 
That's not helpful. No. Still bones, though. Ooh. Okay, let's do it. Oh, they ran away. Oh, it's party time for kittens. Cats, party cats. Cats, cats, cats. They didn't cats. hear it. They didn't oh, hear I, it. I've turned it I've turned it down. It's way down. Oh, did I I died? Oh no, I ran out of bone time. There we go. There oh, we go. A little a little, uh, a little I'm ring. A tiny oh damn it. Tiny little thing. Thank you, Atari 2600 dude. These are happy cats. Happy cats. You ready for some catnip? Uh, so let's yeah? go to the cat can. Oh, are you ready for the catnips? Okay. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh. Uh, do you have another one? Another oh, that's coaster? a lot. Uh, oh, yeah, under there. Here. So let's go back to <laughs> Novice and see how many... Time for kitty uppers. Thank you, Atari 2600. Woohoo! Happy, happy, so, happy. I have to go get that cheese. And then the next thing will come on. I can see the paper clip over there. Yeah. And You're gonna have some? Oh, they constantly revolve. Okay. Sprite's just chilling. He's like, oh, yeah. maybe I'll have some. Maybe not. Oh, maybe I'll just ro roll shove my face in it there we go <laughs> just rub rub your face right in there. so there's no delay time between before the next bonus item yeah daryl says on novice it's easy to trap most of the cats in the center area so i guess yeah once they're kind of trapped in there oh i see yeah okay. they're so slow moving compared to the other levels always coming for you Oh my gosh. You are paying attention. I was playing with the doors. Oh. <laughs> now it's reset. Oh god. Send me to the corner. Not that one. Oh, I shouldn't be eating these things. No? Because I don't want to increase the level. <laughs> increase the level. I want to get those cats. Yeah, you trapped. just have to leave one of them left behind though, right? Oh. Yeah, trap them in the middle with the, uh... Oh. There we go. the yellow. Come in here. Come in here. Come on, little slow cat. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I've got three. Yeah, you just have Ugh. two. No, there's more now. There's three more to go. That helps. That helps. Yeah, it does. D-pad, why do you betray me? <laughs> oh my god. It's okay. Sprite's having fun. Are you having fun? Are you making a big mess? Who kicked this across the floor? <laughs> mm -hmm. Was that you? I said yes. Was that you? Aww. Sprite likes to play with catnip. Yes, he does. Are you done with your catnip? Are you done? He's still licking it up. Mm. Cleaning the floor. Sneezing. Oh my god. So many bones. You might want to flip back whenever while well, you Oh. Up. Yeah. He's done his He's he's just kind of sniffing. Done his thing. Sniffing down there right now. Ah. Definitely covered in catnip. <laughs> he likes to cover himself in yeah. catnip. Maybe I should work on getting these cats trapped. Maybe. Yellow and blue. Oh, they're coming up. It's yellow and blue. Come on. Blue? Are... Open the blue? Get those oh. other ones in there? Oh, yeah, because they'll try and come towards me, right? Maybe. Okay, come down here. Down, 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 down. Not you. It's, it's like hurting cats. There we go. Oh, there's a fast one. Ah! <laughs> as long as I've trapped the fast one, I think I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do it now. What's up? I'm a baby cat. Yeah, are you hungies? You want some treats? Oh, sweet cat. <laughs> You're trying to get the cats Ow. to cooperate. Yeah, Ow! That's not how it works. Oh, are you gonna scratch? Cats don't cooperate. No. Nope. Scratched and bitten. Ow! 
<laughs> oh, you need your claws cut. Yeah, tonight I think Bad it's claw hat. cutting time. I think it is. Friday claw little, cutting time. Little daggers coming out of this one. Little hypodermic okay. needles. That's right. Don't know what he's ah! I don't know what he's inoculating me with, but it's not good. <laughs> oh, I think it's the opposite of inoculation. <laughs> Infection with toxoplasmosis. Look, look, look. toxoplasmosis. I'm yep. bleeding. One of the side effects of toxoplasmosis is being happy with cats around you. That's true. And being crazy cat lady. Crazy cat lady. I'm already there. I don't need toxoplasmosis. <laughs> don't need any more convincing? No. Oh god, the thing is in there. <gasps> no, he turned around. I thought he was going to... Uh... Okay. Oh. Start turns you into a dog too. Apparently. So there's pause. Oh, Select great. Is nice. Pause. Nice. But start is the dog button. Oh, okay. Good to know. I'm not going to go for the pause anymore. Nope. Not, I messed up and. Oh, no. Oh. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. That cat's all hopped up on goofballs. <laughs> <laughs> ah, mine have ultra sharp katana claws. Cut doesn't even uh, register until about a minute passes and then it starts bleeding. It, that's exactly what just happened to me, Revan yeah. Dooley. I'm safe. I'll just sit in here forever. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like the arcade. Like, it's so high quality in its sound and graphics. It feels... It's so good. Pardon my yawn. It feels like a arcade game. Like, you, you could like be playing, playing this an on arcade. an arcade. It's really fantastic. Yeah. Daryl, right? Daryl, yep. Way to go, Daryl. <laughs> Daryl Ganther. Yes. Daryl 19... Yes. Ah! 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 Waste of dog. In the arcade, does the maze change at all? Or does is it, it the, same the same maze all the time? Just harder, harder foes. I, th I think so, because yeah. the maze kind of showed this. This maze. Uh, the arcade showed this maze as well. Because you always have to have that middle part, right? The... Same maze, yes. Okay. Nice. So on the arcade machines, like this is completely burned into the screen. Oh, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the green. Uh, ah. Oh. Ugh. Too stupid. Stupid. This game plays the 7800 strengths. The 7800 was meant to be the definitive word for Golden Age arcade ports. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, uh, D-pad. I really don't like D-pads. Depends on the D-pad, but... It depends on the D-pad, depends on the game. Depends on the game, yeah. One more? Yep. Yaha! I mean, the novice is easier. Oh, it's novice. Okay. The arcade has the hawk, but death is hard. The arcade level's so hard. Oh, red. Is that how hard it is in the actual arcade, too, with the hawk? It's so hard. I think this one would be hard with multiple mazes, you know. Oh, you missed the cheese. Hmm? Oh. It. Sometimes Let's I go just... right to the end. Yeah. Oh. It's the D-pad. Blame the D-pad. Can't get around corners. Yeah, I'm going to look into alternative. You didn't miss the cheese again. You have to go right to the end. Oh, my God. There you go. It's not just touching it. You have, you have to, to go be in the square. You have to, like, smack the wall. In the tile. Right up against the wall. Yeah, you have to be fully squared in the tile. Arcade level is easier than the arcade. Oh, wow. Nostal Nostalgic says, I think I'm going to call it a night. Congratulations again on the fifth anniversary, and thanks for the stream and support of the community. You are welcome, and thank you for watching. Continue to watch. Put, put 25 cents in a jar every time you play the arcade version, like a swear jar. Yep. That's how quickly you'd lose your money playing the... Oh, I got, got one of those miceys. Or one of the cats. Ah! Oh! Came out just and as you're passing. And then the D-pad. The D-pad. D-pad. <laughs> there is an see. SNES Advantage, Super Advantage joystick. Come on. Come 
I'm not super keen. Oh no, you had so many bones. So many bones. I'm just still trying to get used to the radio. Yeah. That's that's you what I'm playing with right memory. now. Yeah. Like, I know yellow's up. Yellow's up. I'm still trying to figure out the red, blue. Yeah. Like red is left, blue is right. There are a few third-party SNES arcade sticks. Ooh, okay. So I need something good, but also findable and affordable. And that's always hard with stuff this old. Because um, I do have, like, the NES Advantage joystick. It's okay. Obviously, it doesn't work on SNES. Ah, dog! I like how it nudges your character and the cat's character in or out, depending on how far through the door you are. Like, if you slam the door on yourself, it'll push you one way or the other. Oh, you got it. Doggy, doggy, doggy. They will all be eight-way. I still have an easier time with arcade joysticks than D-pads in terms of the eight-way ability. Um, obviously the ultimate joystick would have a four-way, eight-way switch and of course a 45 degree angle switch too and be able to support every single... There, There's a project for somebody. Have a joystick that has lots of buttons and that is a nine-pin joystick that plugs into all the nine-pin systems oh, but has an adapter so you can so it works on all the system nine pin systems so it works on a 2600 7800 sega master system genesis uh even like snes nes like just adapters because they have um portable consoles like the like the um analog portable Analog, what is it called? Oh, Analog? Name. Pocket. Analog Pocket, where it has adapters for the cartridges. Oh, and has a keypad for Coleco and Television. Yes, yes. So it, it it's workable on everything. Oh, stop it. And um, I don't think it would be super hard. It would be super expensive. Oh my god, you almost died. Um, it would be a little expensive because you'd have to have the circuitry for each of those systems. But... It's pretty much like connecting, like even a manual switch, connecting the pins to the buttons and every system has their own routing for the buttons. So it can be like a toggle almost. Or it could be a digital switch as well. Um, because a lot of systems up, down, left, right is just straight out pins. Like, um, because I've because I've been doing research to try and replace the Sega Master System joystick D-pad for my Lynx. And I want to use a 7800 joystick on it. Up, down, left, right are fine. It's the two buttons that are wired completely differently for the Sega, uh, Sega Master System and the 7800. But, um, trap yourself. I'm not a hardware person, otherwise this would be like my ultimate hardware uh, fancy of making this joystick. The ultimate retro joystick. Works on all the systems. That would be absolutely astounding. Yeah, just like how 2600 and 7800 two buttons are wired completely differently. Yep. Atari 2600 adapter for the Steel Battalion controller. Or, yeah. I wonder how you could. No, you'd have to have it all internally. These cats are crazy. Are we running out? Oh, oh. I hear it again. I guess I didn't. Oh. I guess it turned it off. Oh well, that was fun. Oh, that's a good question, Daryl. If you're a dog already, and you hit the button to be a dog again, will it use another bone up and refresh your dogginess? Uh, 
or do you have to absolutely wait till you run out and you're vulnerable as a mouse to be able to hit it again? Mm -hmm. Actually, we can test that out right now. Mm -hmm. Very easily. Yes. Yes. Great answer. <laughs> to the first or the second? Okay. So I have two bones. I'm a dog. I'm going to do this. It has to run out. Oh, no, it doesn't. I just pressed it. He said it has to run out. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> Watch, I'll do it again. People, you aren't watching. Nobody's yep. watching. No. Okay, let me go get that other bone. Okay. Yeah. Okay, ready? I'm a dog. I'm going to press the button again. Oh, when you're starting to run out. Oh, no, it must have run out then. Yeah. That seems so short. I misunderstood. <laughs> no, it's true. No, you can't press it. It has. He has to be flashing at least, right? Uh, no. no. I pressed it while he was flashing, and it, it still, still didn't, didn't trigger. Yeah. You have to wait till it's completely done. Gotcha. Ah, ah. Sorry, I shouldn't have asked a uh, two-part question. <laughs> I should have just asked mm -hmm. a yes or no. But it's always funny when you ask an or question, and they go yes. Figure out which one they said yes to. So I think we're not going to do another show after this. <laughs> I'm exhausted. We're gonna do another show after this? Yeah, to get on do more nominations. Oh, oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> you would have been like, oh no. <laughs> It's just I'm, I'm pretty drained. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I've not been well, so. No, that uh, makes sense. We're going to have to break. do it on the weekend, though. We can do it on the weekend. On Sunday or something. Yeah, we yeah. can do it on the weekend. All right. So we're going to do the right. um, the two works in progress categories. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all unique because they're works in progress. Ports and, and completed. Or ports and um, originals. Tiny was out of the loop, yeah. That's not unusual. <laughs> She just sits down and plays. I'm like, what am I doing today? Okay. Oh, we're doing an interview today? All okay, right. Cool. Excellent. Sounds who, fun. Who are we interviewing? Yeah. <laughs> I just show up. Yeah. It's the great, the greatest job. Yep. <laughs> James has very low expectations for me. <laughs> no, you do such a great job. I don't need to oh, prep you. Thank You're just you. like, hey, I'm here. That's all I need. And then You'll sometimes I show up and there's, there's crater cake waiting for me. <laughs> crater so. cake. Oh, I like the crater cake. It's something. Yeah. As long as it's edible, I'm perfectly happy. Well, we still happy. have to eat that. So yeah. we'll, we'll have our crater cake. and. Uh... Oh, oh, oops. Oh, I accidentally yeah. went into the end. Okay. We're going to have to change it to a dog here. Kitten. Mind not eating. Oh, <gasps> oh my goodness. Don't eat that. You silly kitty. Come here. Say hello. Hello. Say hi to the nice people. Say hi. Sprite. Little soot sprite. Yes. Tanny is the talent. Let the producers figure their out. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly. right. Exactly. Just point me in the direction you need me to go. That's right. Uh, I'm happy with that. There's a show. Some of you might know it. Re um, <gasps> the one Good we're Mythical watching? Morning. Oh, yes. Yeah, where I swear they don't know what they're doing uh, every show. They're like, what are we doing today? Yeah. And they just read the teleprompter. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Because they do the show they must, five times a week. But they must know the concepts that are coming up. But if you do it so much, you're just like, okay, which throw it at today? me. Which one today? Like, yeah. they may know, not know which one they're, they're doing They're doing that on day. any given day, yeah. And they also don't know, like, they have quizzes. They don't know the answers. Yeah. They just, they just, they're just there. I mean, they're not the producers. Well. They're not even the writers. They are literally. They, the they, they probably the did company, writing at they, some point. Uh, some, I'm yeah. sure they have input, but that's just kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're like I don't know. They own the company. Uh, they're not the producers. They're yeah. not the writers. Yeah. It's so funny. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to turn into a dog here. Uh, I'll do a dog again. Yeah, up to Spready Pants. What? I pressed it. Oh no. Computer says no though. Peter says, no, you did not press it yeah. in time. Smoke 3D4. Reno 911 was supposed to be mostly ad lib with a rough outline of storylines. Ah, yeah. If you have great great enough uh, improv actors. Yes, yeah. Um, that works. It makes sense that you would you would have a bit of a, a shell or a structure of a story and you would follow it. But it seems like even movies where they do a lot of ad lib, there's still a very oh, yes. strong script. Oh, yeah. They just leave some gaps in there where they can ad lib and, and, and say things, which is, is pretty cool, actually. I think it's quite a skill 
yeah. to be able to think on your feet like that. It I do is. not have that skill. And to keep it on track. Oh my goodness. Remember the joke, try different jokes. I think it's pretty amazing. Well, I would do a lot better at improving than memorizing lines. That's oh, for sure. I would be the exact opposite. Really? Yeah, I think I could memorize a play. I don't think I'd be very good at improv. Uh, um, I, I just cannot memorize personally. anything. Yeah. Not saying I'm good at improv, I'm just saying I'm better. I would be better at improv <laughs> than memorizing lines yeah. because I am the worst at memorizing lines. So how were you for like, music like like for memorizing songs and song lyrics zero zero terrible really i'm pretty bad at memorizing lyrics really i i never had look, a problem when with i'm lyrics. in a ba when i was in a band um i'm still in a band technically mm -hmm. um at some performances you can see like sheets of paper ah uh, so you're, you're singing with off like them. little like at least the first line of the next verse interesting um because I I know what follows, but like verse to verse, I'm like, oh my god, what verse is this? What does it start with? Yeah. With other people, like if I sing it enough, I'm fine. But like, yeah. oh, this is a new song. I haven't I haven't quite sung it enough yet to completely memorize it. Come here. I won't say I was great at memorizing songs, but when I took singing lessons. It would all be sung from memory, so uh, the expectation was, okay, here's the sheet music, you memorize it in a couple of weeks, like make sure you have the whole song memorized, so... Um, I can sight read like nobody's business. I'm... sight sing or sight read? Uh, not, sight singing is hard. Sight sing. I used to do a little bit of sight singing sight and that was really hard. <laughs> not sight singing at um, all, no. Uh, but uh, I'm not too bad at memorizing lyrics and, and play... play Talk about playing music scripts and well yeah playing music's different but even playing music you have to you know if you're going to memorize a song yeah. um so i would do well in those orchestras that um like here's here's the music you're playing today you're yeah. being paid uh we're recording this oh my goodness i can't imagine and uh that's really cool though i think it's amazing when you have that talent because well, i've heard that for movies right they um they get the orchestra in they get one run through then they make notes and that the next that's one's amazing. the recording yeah that's i mean that's it, that's a professional musician right it's there be, it's because it's so expensive to yeah. hire a um orchestra that that's all the time they have to yeah. do it erin oh, says that in acting they say learn the story not the text memorizing specific words is totally other thing than understanding mm. what the message is that is the shortcut for actors, yes. And so if you flub a word, it doesn't really matter as long as within the context of what you're saying, it doesn't change, right? So if you know the story, you're not, that's less likely to happen. Yeah. We were watching something on Wired about a guy who is a, like a world champion memorizer. Oh my God. And then he was talking about memorizing Technique. lines yep. by memorizing the first letter of every word. Yeah, and it and it worked, and I was following along. I'm like, okay, yeah, that and, works. And he's like, picture the first letter of every word, and it's much okay. easier to memorize lines. Like if you if you have to memorize them word for word, and I was like, wow, that's a really good tip. <laughs> yeah, I would never have thought of that, but it's true. If you can picture it, you can you can memorize it a lot faster. So. Yeah, I also wonder how much of my brain capacity is wasted with music and movie memorization. <laughs> Uh, I... I'm not sure how that works. Does memory have like almost infinite amount of room? No. Or do things get forced out after a while? I... Or do we just think things get forced out because we get older and we just are not good at memorizing? Well, them? I don't know. I have I have a theory that um, you fill your brain up through your childhood with useless information. <laughs> and then as yes. you get older and you try to learn more information, there's just no capacity left. It's yep. like the hard drive is full. You can maybe clear out a, f a little bit of, of the of the files you don't really need you know the multiple copies of the photos you actually accidentally have on in different uh, pieces of software but, but those 80s theme show lyrics for... why do i know all whitney houston's lyrics <laughs> why do i still know them i don't know but i memorized them when i was 10 and they're still in my <laughs> They'll brain never so go they're away. never going yeah human memory is weird <laughs> it is oh boy oh my goodness anyway novice is fun to play I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, it's, it's good practice, the novice. Yeah. Um, cause the cats are getting faster. Oh, I don't have any bones. Oh boy, I'm using those up. Yeah. Erilyn, uh, again, a lot of actors who have done plays say that once the play is over, they will forget a lot of it. 
getting oh, it in the body on, on stage, it will come back. But often once it's over, it's over. Short term versus long term. Yeah. Mm, yes. Um, and then Smitty B says, watching the first couple of seasons of the original Doctor Who is interesting because they had so little time to film that they had to just go with whatever they got in one or two takes. <laughs> oh, boy. So everyone is flubbing lines left, <laughs> right, and center, but it comes across as more natural. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're having a casual conversation, like a real conversation, your, yeah. your lines aren't perfect. Your words aren't perfect. So yeah yeah and yeah. and you're using the words that are more natural to you as well yes yeah interesting smoked i can still quote movies word for word like ferris bueller weird science breakfast club yeah ferris bueller was one i remember watching an awful lot on the edge right now on the edge oh still good some people can visualize patterns, symbols, space over words, lyrics. What's interesting is some people can remember patterns much better than words or remember sounds versus text. I don't know what I'm better at uh, <laughs> in I terms can of those things. visually memorize things. Yeah. I think we talked about this, like dates. If someone says, oh, you know, is it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, oh eight days God. from now? Yeah. I don't count. I visualize a calendar in my mind. Oh, okay. And yeah. and so I, I'm I'm not good with Oh D pad. Stop it. I'm not good with words, memorizing okay. certain names of things. Yeah. But I can picture things really well. My memory for, for visual is really good. Mmm, yeah. Oh D pad! <laughs> yeah. You can only have a maximum of six dog bones too, oh, so you gotta use I them. maxed out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's good to know because then you yeah. can use them take up. advantage of it. Might as well use them up if you uh, I'm if you trapped can. here. That's very cool. Back to front the crow, and for no reason whatsoever, I'll go to space and come back and say to myself, "Mr. Gideon, you're not paying attention." <laughs> the crow. Yeah, back to front the crow. Mm. I haven't seen the crow pretty much since it came Render out. Render ghost. It sounds like you have a bit of a gothy background to you there. <laughs> the crow. I haven't watched the crow in a long time. Yeah. I'm picturing you with floppy black hair. <laughs> Does he have floppy black hair? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Kind of like James is, but dyed black. Yeah, I don't have black hair, sadly. Poor Brandon Lee. Oh, oh. I know. <laughs> that is very sad. Rendered story. ghost just a smidge. Uh, just a smidge ah, of goth okay. in there. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Daryl, this game is awesome. So, so much fun. So much fun. <laughs> but uh, I need practice at it. So that I... Oh. Get him, get him, get my, all of them. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's Oh, funny. it might be due to a certain industrial internet radio station's fault, his gothiness. Oh. Oh, but he didn't say that out loud. There we go. <laughs> Just an internal conversation yes. we're having. Yes. Weirdo with Al Baldwin oh. case now and questions around gun safety. Yeah. yeah, that's a whole thing. I, There's so many people after that happened that said, why aren't people using airsoft guns? They look, they're made to look exactly yeah. the same. Like they're specifically weighted as well. To, and look to the same. feel feel like, like a, a gun. Real gun and there's I, that's a good question I don't that's know. a good question it's just so dangerous it is so dangerous. i guess if you need to cock cock it back or like there's certain things that don't do the same but it's just so dangerous to do that yeah thank you daryl yeah uh, this is astounding uh the demo is available in the atari age forums mm -hmm. right now Go check it out. Go download it. Run it on your emulator. Run it on um, your actual 7800 if you've got a multi-cart. Mm -hmm. um, it is super fun. Uh, Daryl, you hit it out of the park yet again. Amazing. With an amazing yeah. arcade it conversion. It looks fantastic, and it's really fun to play. Yeah. Everyone needs to try the demo out. Like, or, oh or the full yeah. is Just the demo is available There's right a now. It's a two-level demo. Two-level demo, okay. Uh, I think you can play it on... Can you play it on... Um, the beginner arcade and expert because yeah. two levels of expert you'll be at it for a while like mm. you won't run out of things to play there um yeah so we'll probably be back on either saturday night or sunday night we'll see our schedule to do the next uh, round of nominated games there'll be 2600 uh work in progress port and originals 
and uh, then after that, Tuesday and Friday, and we'll keep doing the the nominations all the way up to leading up to it. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, Atari Homebrew Awards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but this is kind of our last regular show of the season. This one. Before we do a full, well, just just all awards. Stuff, it's just right? all awards yeah, yeah, yeah. from now okay. on. Um, that ends the kind of the end of the season, and then we take a little break and we'll play games here and there. Some, uh, some, like I was saying at the top of the show, we'll we'll play some uh, exclusive games when they come up, mm -hmm. um, or special days, but they won't be scheduled for a while because I want to uh, work on some programming, some 2600 mm -hmm. programming, see how well I do. Uh, probably be asking for help in the forums. Uh, I'll be doing it in um, assembly, uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it sh I'll, I'll be working on something s easier, easier than like something easy to start off with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Renard Ghost. Too bad James ruined the whole show with the travesty of a cake. Yeah, we haven't even eaten the cake. Bring out the cake. There you go. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? <laughs> I hope it worse. tastes good. I don't really care what a cake looks like. No, I don't care what taste. cake looks like. I'm a little, I'm a little scared, here, actually, to be honest. I am too. I, uh, I think it's, I don't think it's cooked in the middle. It almost looks like a donut at this point it, with that icing on it. Uh, it's a little, oh no. No? Um, no. Maybe just on the, just take the ends. <laughs> Might have to throw this in the microwave or something to um, finish it off. Okay, dish it out. I want a piece. Tastes fine. It, it didn't... Yeah, we can send a, a piece of cake to you. No, it's not cooked. You don't want it. <laughs> this is a travesty of a cake. <laughs> this is a cake fail. Mm -hmm. Still bloody in the middle. <laughs> it is. E.T. pit cake. Yep. Mm -hmm. you can't get out of this pit either. Yeah, I have an ambulance on speed dial, so don't get salmonella from the salmonella. uncooked flour. Am I going to get salmonella from the cake? From the uncooked flour? Oh, wonderful. Maybe. Um, no, it was in the oven for uh, I think we just need to cut out minutes. the middle, and then the edge. Well, just, it's, it's just all fine. edge. It's just all edge. That's tastes okay. Fine, yeah, it tastes fine, Um I'm not going to say good job, but I will oh, say Oh, no, don't say good job. <laughs> Please. I think I'll make the next one. Mm-hmm. No. Uncooked eggs. No, there's no eggs in this. No. It's an eggless cake. Yeah. So you don't have to be concerned about that. No. Um, so the next uh, show is not on the 10th, because that's today. Errolyn, people people get um, diseases from, from raw eggs and cookie dough all the time, They do. Too. <laughs> they just risk their lives. Yeah. Um, so we'll be playing Atari 2600 Work in Progress Original, Work in Progress Ports, tomorrow or Sunday. Just watch the usual places for when that'll be. Make sure you follow this channel if you aren't already following it. And that will be, um, you'll be alerted when we go live. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be going on to 7800 games. We'll do all the 7800s, the next one on Tuesday. And uh, then on the next Friday, we'll be finishing off with 8-bit uh, Lynx and Jaguar. Might even be adding an extra show for that because there's a lot of... I packed too many. <laughs> There's not enough for five, just five days. It really needs to be six days. And then on February uh, 25th, the big show, it's on a Saturday, not a Friday, not a Tuesday. It's a Saturday. Uh, and it's at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. Make sure you click on that to know what uh, time zone, what time it is in your mm -hmm. time zone, because I make all these clickable, if you never noticed that. And Google Fancy. will tell you what time it is playing in your time zone. Oh, really? Because it knows where you live. Huh? Or it might. Well, it might if you it let might. it. Huh? It does. It knows. Oh, usually Based does. on IP address, I think. And it knows. That, oh. I don't know. It knows. Um, yeah, I think that's it leading up. And then we take uh, at least a month or two break, maybe. Um, I'm going to add James Cake as in 30 seconds. <laughs> James <laughs> that strap for us. Oh. Here, go ahead. Eat more? Dig in. I've got some on oh, the Oh, just dig in. I'm just eating straight out of the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy Google, Google yep. Mm-hmm. Gonna be an ugly prize. Aw. Aw. But it tastes good. Yep. And the Does cake is not good. a lie, so. Mm. Nope, it's a real cake. Mm -hmm. The cats are curious. Yeah, it is tricky to work out the time zone, so mm. that's why I put it in. It's based on GMT and then works itself backwards to your uh, time zone. 
Um, so thanks for hanging out with mm -hmm. us on our fifth uh, anniversary of the show. Looking mm -hmm. forward to the tenth anniversary in five years. <laughs> My goodness, we'll yeah. see. Hopefully, we we're still in good work in or good working order, all we of all. us. And the cats, and too. the cats. You gonna make it? Yeah. It's actually Sprite's uh, birthday. Oh, um, that's right. Coming up in a couple weeks. Couple weeks. I think it's next month. Yeah. I think I looked it up. It was early March. Something like that, or late February. Yeah, something like that. He's yeah. turning one soon. So. No, these cats can't eat the cake. No. It's chocolate cake. I don't well, think that's good for them. They got some treats, so that's good enough. They're for licking them. each other on the floor right now. <laughs> that's so. This is super unusual. Yeah. Actually. I don't know if this we can get this. Yeah. Super, super unusual that Atari would put up with this. Yeah. He would usually hiss and, and run smack away. him in the face so they're being very very happy i think it's all the um catnip. the catnip it's the they, love nip look look how look how mellow these two guys oh, are oh 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 a little bit of <laughs> oh sprite is the one he's like i licked you i'm the dominant yeah. cat i get to smack you <laughs> february 29th leap your cat yeah there you go i don't think so five yards yes uh, thank you for hanging out with mm -hmm. us. Dan ABC, Andrew Davey, Atari 2600 Dude, Vitoko, Chelsea Donnie Mount, Daryl 1970, Rendered Ghost, Smoked 3D4, uh, Erlen. Erlen. Special Again, thanks to thank Erlen. Thank you for joining us. Can't wait till you're here live. Yeah, I think that'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Daryl 1970, of course, for making this amazing, amazing game, Rat Trap. So good. Um, Chitlit La, Tar Twenty Six Hundred Dude, Smitty B, S Ramirez, Raven Tuli, Raven Tuli, yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. Old, old style, old style, um, Dan A B C, Caffman Two D. I always feel like I'm repeating names, but anyway, sometimes do they get bonus names? V H Z C B R Pocock, yeah. Phaser Cat Games at the top. Wonderful. So many wonderful people tuned in. Yeah. Thank you so much. If I miss some of your comments, uh, I'm going to watch it back. Okay. The show to see some comments. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for tuning in. And uh, yeah, we'll be back this weekend for sure because we have to get through these games. Okay. Before the... Before, before the, the, the final show. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. awards. The awards show. I'm excited for the awards. Oh, me too. I yeah. wonder who will win. <laughs> the votes are coming in. That's awesome. Still ahead uh, of last year for votes. So lots, lots of people, of people Lots of people voting. That's awesome. So if you haven't voted, make sure you get into the Atari Age forums. Mm -hmm. uh, play the games. Vote for your favorite. Um, yeah, there's lots of categories. So vote in all the categories mm -hmm. you can vote in. If you don't have a Jaguar, then, you know. You may not be able to vote in the Jaguar, but vote in the systems that you play. The Lynx, Jaguar, Atari 8-Bit, 7800, 2600, uh, and packaging. Uh, everybody can vote in packaging because mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't depend on the game, and you can see all the pictures. And, uh, yeah, there's 21 categories this year. Lots. Mm -hmm. Ready to make all those trophies? Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to do that. Yeah, that's the other thing I have to do this weekend. Okay. You just have to make one good trophy before the show. I know, I show. know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's all we need. All right. Yeah, Dan's going to vote soon. Awesome. Uh, so we will uh, see you in a day or two. Yes. See you then. See you then. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.